Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, welcome to the Gauteng Orientation Workshop. My name is Monwa Bisi, and I will be your co-host for the day. Um, once again, welcome to our orientation day. Now, basically what we are going to be doing today is to educate you as our new students as to how to navigate UNISA services. Now, we've invited all the colleagues from all the relevant departments that you are going to need um, through your study journey. They'll be making presentations and teaching us as to what is it exactly what they do and what is it exactly that they can help you with as our new students. Now, uh, before we waste more time, um, I would like to invite oh, Mr. Victor Mbukle, who will be doing our opening welcome and purpose of the day. And by the way, we have our sign, sign language interpreter, oh, Ms. Sophie Mabaso. Thank you for that, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Mbukle, I don't know if you are available for us, sir. Let's just give him a moment. He's probably having technical problems because that's what we have been experiencing this morning, most of us. Just give us a moment, please. Uh, sorry, um, I think Mr. Bukle is still trying to connect. Maybe you can play the opening video in the meantime while he connects. Noted, Law. Thank you. Uh, colleagues, good morning. Uh, program director, can you hear me? Yes, I can, Babun Bukke. Good morning, sir. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I switch off these calls. Uh, program director, Mr. May, uh, our regional director, all the managers from Gauteng region, uh, our colleagues, staff from Gauteng region, and all the students who have joined this platform, good morning. Um, I've shared with you my presentation for this morning. Purpose, we firstly like to welcome you, all our new students, and some of the old students who might have joined this platform. We'd like to welcome you to UNISA. Uh, you'd probably know that UNISA is one of the mega university. When we're talking about one a mega university, we're talking about the university that has more than 100,000 students. So that's how massive UNISA is. 
if you have watched the welcome video, you would have seen that we already have more than 380,000 students. So we are a massive university. But today we have invited you to join the orientation session organized by, by the Gauteng region. Now it's important for you to know that UNISA has uh, about seven regions. We have uh, offices in Eastern Cape, KwaZulu-Natal, Midlands. Uh, when we talk Midlands, we're talking Rustenburg and so forth, not KZN. Uh, we've got uh, regional offices in the Northeastern. Northeastern would cover uh, Limpompo and those areas. Um, we've got offices in the Western Cape. Uh, we even have uh, presence in Ethiopia, that's in Africa. But as I've said, today we've invited you to Gauteng region. So we hope that most of you are from this region. Gauteng region comprises of uh, five offices. So we've got presence in Eguruleni, there's a UNISA office. If you go to Florida, there's a UNISA office. Johannesburg, we've got the regional service center there. We've also got offices in Sunnyside, which is our hub, uh, if I can say so, uh, kind of like a head office for the region. And we also have presence at the farm. Now, the purpose of inviting you to join us for this orientation, uh, as the program director touched on it a little bit during the introduction, we want to share with you what we do as a university and as a region. We want to share with you how we can support you as a student. Uh, remember our ultimate purpose, it's same as your goal. That is for you to succeed, to complete your studies, to graduate and be able to start your career. But for you to reach that level, you need to easily maneuver through your years of studying at UNISA. So as a regional office, as a Gauteng region, we have uh, a goal to support you to achieve all your targets. So the orientation session today, we're going to be talking about all the services that are offered by the five offices, the five Gauteng UNISA offices. What services do we offer to our student? But more importantly, we're going to share with you what support is available for you as a UNISA student. So I want to plead with you, all our students who are in this platform, to please use this session to get as much information as possible. Engage with the various presenters during the question and the answer session. Ask as many questions as you'd like as possible so that when you leave uh, this orientation, you have as much information as possible to easily maneuver or to navigate uh, through the, your studies through UNISA. Now, in the program today, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have presentations from our colleagues from the counseling unit, from the library, from the tutorial service. We're also going to have presentation from uh, student administration. Student administration is very broad. It covers student funding. It covers student assessment. So all those topics I've seen, you know, before we started on the chat. The already a number of students are asking registered, uh, registration related question. So the opportunity will come. We're going to have that presentation and then we're also going to have the, the question and an answer sessions. We're going to have, have colleagues from our technology enhanced learning uh, that in fact involves uh, encompasses our labs. We've got laboratories, uh, computer labs for which if you are registered, you want to do your assignments or you will have exam that you have to write online. These are the colleagues who can actually assist you. So we want you to know our facilities and what our facilities have and we in fact, invite you to use our facilities because they are there for you. We have more support, which you will hear about 
during uh, this orientation. We have our communications unit. Uh, by now, the invitation, the link to join this orientation, you've received it through this communications unit. So any communication uh, that we have to make to communicate with you, it goes via these colleagues. So they will explain to you how they communicate, when will you receive, a, 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 when you can you check your, your Facebook or which tool are they using to communicate at, with our student and how you as a student can communicate back to us. For students who are having um, some or one other kind of a disability, we have a unit at UNISA called the ArcSuite unit. These are colleagues or this is the unit uh, that specializes, that really takes care, focuses on students with disabilities. Um, so if you do have a disability, UNISA has supports you. So we don't want you to struggle because of one or other type of a disability. They cover all the wide range of disabilities. So they will also introduce themselves, how you can reach them, how they can assist you uh, so that, you know, if you're having, as I've said, any type of disability, they can be able to assist you. We want you to know that you, as a UNISA student, you've got a representative, you've got a national SRC, Student Representative Council, you also have, you know, local, depending where you are, if you are in Johannesburg, for an example, uh, there's also a student representative council from that office. If you are in Sunnyside, there's a student representative council in that office. So they will also uh, be given an opportunity to introduce themselves, to let you know how you can reach them. If you've got issues that you want to raise with UNISA management or UNISA staff, or you've got suggestions because we don't want to only uh, receive, you know, complaints, but we also want to receive compliments. So where we are doing well, uh, please also highlight to those. We also have colleagues from a unit which deals with first year experience. Most of you, this would probably be your first year. This would be your first engagement with UNISA. How can you navigate? How can you meet with fellow students? How can you get the, 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 the assistant you need? And how can you make your experience exciting and memorable? Uh, we will have such a presentation. So my job is simply to, to welcome you, to say, Hold on, uh, sit tight, because we're going to have an exciting program, which is going to cover probably all the questions that you already have in mind. But at the end of the session, we will open um, the session for question and answers. So in conclusion, as I've said before, we want to encourage you to visit our various regional service centers or offices. We want to encourage you to use the services that are there for you because we are here to support you. We want to hear from you. We want to see how we can improve. We want to hear how we can make your experience at UNISA a memorable experience so that you enjoy your few years that you will be with us here at UNISA. But we want you to, at the end of the day, to complete your studies, graduate, and come back as an alumna of this university. You have fellow student, I've seen on the chat, others are already saying, hey, can we form study group? Yes, online you can discuss it, but you know, if you come to our campuses, that's where you meet fellow students, you can see them face, face to face, and it's very easy to start those study groups and get a fellow support from your student. So in conclusion, I want to say we wish you the best during your journey as a UNISA student. We wish you a success in your studies, that you're going to complete your studies in record time and represent UNISA as best as you can. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and enjoy this session for today. Thank you, uh, Program Director. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, that was a very detailed opening. It's highly appreciated. One can actually say that we covered most of our workshop just with your just with your opening and welcoming message. Thank you, sir. Uh, we appreciate that very much. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, um, before we actually commence with uh, calling out our speakers, I would like to drop a few house rules for us here. First rule. I can see that there's more than 63 hands raised. I appreciate the eagerness, don't get me wrong. Um, it's just that this is not the time 
to entertain hands. Remember, like Mr. Mbukle said, after each and every presentation, you will be given an opportunity for you to ask your question verbally. So do not stress, um, do, 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 really do not worry that we, you won't be able to pose your question to our speakers and presenters. Uh, we have provided this platform for you to be able to express yourself as well. If there's something that you really do not understand when it comes to the services that we provide to you as our students, that you may feel free to ask. So I'm going to ask everyone who has raised their hand to please uh, lower it so that when uh, after the presentation of the first speaker, when it comes through, when you raise your hand, we will be able to acknowledge you and unmute you so you'll be able to ask your question. Yeah? So please, everyone, please, please lower your hands. Please lower your hands, okay? Then after that, number two, all mics must be muted. Remember, you don't want to be disturbing other people while they're making presentations or asking questions. So um, we need to um, make sure that all our mics are muted. Because remember, for this program to be a success, everyone needs to comply. So we will play our part. And I also plead with you for you to please play your part so our program can be a success. Okay, we are like 10 minutes behind. We're actually 14 minutes behind. So I'm going to call our first speaker, who's from communications. Her name is U Obakin Mutama Ali. Obs, are you here? Obakin, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, good morning. The floor is yours. Play my presentation. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Wakim Mansamai, a communication marketing officer in the Houghton region. My task is really simple. I'm going to take you through the different platform that UNISA uses to communicate to students. The first and, form, and the most important is the UNISA website. You can access that by typing www.unisa.ac.za on your web browser. You will land on this main page. It is full of vital information. As a registered student, the most important page is the MyUNISA page. You can either click on this link here or the one at the top of the page. So I'm just going to click on this and just show you around. Um, the most important thing on this page is basically your announcements or notices. Please make sure that you just read this on a daily basis because it tends to have important information. And at the bottom, you've got the different events that you can attend either visually or physically. And on your left hand pane, you've got a tap um, a button that says My Life Email, and you can click this to access your My Life Email account, which is one of the most important tools for you to be able to communicate with your lecturers, or if you want to communicate to UNISA in general. As a registered student, you have to use your My Life Email account. And at the bottom, the UNISA radio, um, it's a talk radio station, and it's a very informative radio station. Please do take a listen to that. Because you can learn a thing or two. I'm now going to navigate to the original uh, web page. And if you want to do that, you will click on this button that says Learner Support and Regions. If you click on there, another page will display. And you'll be able to navigate to the Houghton region. And you can click on there. And on there, it's got all the different um, services that will be spoken about later on in this um, in this orientation. Um, the service offerings, you can read about us, and also a contact page. And on the right-hand pane, it's all the stuff, it's the same thing. It's about us, services, the timetables for tutorial classes. Somebody will explain all of that. Um, highlights newsletter and also a contact us page. And our announcement will all, all, all go on here. You can follow us on our Facebook page, uh, YouTube, but these are the main is uh, social media platforms. 
in the region, we've got a special site called a project site, and you can click on my modules, click on my modules, and you should find Houghton region. Well, I will give you the link for that so that you can en enroll yourself on there. And this is how it looks like. And you've got all the different services that my colleagues will talk about and just explain in a bit more detail about the services that are offered in the Houghton region. We are also available on social media. You can like us on Facebook, or you can just simply scan this QR code, um, or you can search for us, uh, Uni University of South Africa, Houghton region. And once you find us, just follow us, because you also get important information through the social media platform. This is how our original Facebook page looks like. So if we scroll down, you will see all the important notices that are put up. And do like, comment, yeah. As a user student, you've got access to Office 365. And in the package, um, a social media platform is available. It's called Yammer. Um, also, um, look for us on Yammer. Um, it's called Unisa Houting Region. Um, you just click on there, and then you will find us there, just like us. So that you can also get the. Um, it's a community of UNISA employees and students on the social media platform. And last but not least, we've got a YouTube channel, and you can search for us on YouTube, UNISA Coding Region. And on there, we've got like all the recordings of all the different classes that have taken place, orientation days, and all the important, um, what is this, workshops that would have taken place in the region. And those will be listed here, or in case you miss it, and it will be available on our channel. And for any questions and queries, you can just email us at hotingtl at unisa.ac.za. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ops. Uh, that was brief, but straight to the point. I believe uh, the information reached um, the intended. Uh, yes. Uh, thank you very much, Ops. Uh, you actually saved us some time. Because you made it quick, we're actually on time now. <laughs> so now, uh, before uh, we do a lot, I'd just like to thank you guys for complying and lowering your hands. I see that there's only a few ones there. Uh, maybe it's people who are struggling with, with, with connection. But I appreciate it that the, most of you actually uh, took the instruction and followed through. I appreciate it. OK, let us continue with our program. Uh, I, I would like to call Umis Inga Keswa, who will be representing our SRC unit. I'm not sure if she is available at the moment because she was supposed to make a presentation at 10 to, but I'm hoping that she is online. Inga Okona. Inga. Um, oh, Mr. May, can I please yes. just interrupt you a little bit? Yes, ma'am. Um, um, I've been raising a hand because the last speaker was in a rush. Can we yes, please ask the presenters to be a little bit slow because I'm all, I'm left behind. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry about that, ma'am. Oh, thank you, thank, thank you, Sophie. Um, um, okay, this is what I'm gonna do. Um, uh, let me just give um all our guests an opportunity to ask questions. So you can raise your hand right now if you have a question for Ms. Obakeng Mutamai from Communications. Uh, hence, uh, our Sophie just said that she was very quick in her presentation. Uh, so it might happen that maybe a couple of people didn't actually hear or see uh, what, what she was talking about. So we're going to look at the hands. Gloria, please help me here. Are there any hands visible that have been raised right now? Hello? Yes, we have a hand from Hotzi Tzodetzi. Okay. Tim, so he can ask his question. Thanks, Glo. Yes, Otto?
Let's just give Khutu a moment. Uh, after Khutu Tsotete, we have a hand from Maredi Naledi. Okay, let's go to Naledi. Maybe Khutu disconnected or something because he's not coming through. Naledi? Don't be shy, guys. This, this is an opportunity for you to ask any question that you might um, like some clarity on. Hi, hello. Hello, who's this? Uh, Maredi Naledi. Yes, Naledi, thank you for coming through, ma'am. Uh, you can pose your question to Ms. Mutamai. Yes, um, I wanted to ask, um, if you're from the Northeastern region, which orientation do you attend? Okay, I will actually, uh, 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 okay, let us give Ms. Mutama an opportunity to respond to you. Thank you for your question, Naledi. Thank you. Ops? Baba King? Baba King? Yes, I'm here. Yes, uh, Naledi was asking a question. I don't know if you got it or must I repeat it? Please repeat it. Okay, she says if she's from the northeastern region, which orientation must she attend? Um, she can attend the institutional uh, orientation, which is taking place on the 16th and 17th of this month, February. Okay, she can so check all the details and the events. Or all the details and the, are on my, 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 my That's oh, correct. Okay. Okay, thank you, Ops. All right, cool. Please stay on the line for me. I, I have uh, a few hands, so I have uh, a few questions that need your response. Thank you. Okay. Okay, after Naledi Glow, uh, okay, I see that like, I have 14 hands now. Okay, we're not going to take all the hands, Monobi, so we'll just take yeah. three hands. Okay. Um, the next hand is from Begumuzi Diwa. Okay. Begi? Okay. Let us give him a moment so he can unmute and ask his question. No, it's fine. Hey, Muzi. Yes, hey, Muzi. yes, good morning, everyone. Yes, good morning, Peg Muzi. Yes, you can pose your question, sir. Okay, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, well, I'm asking a question based on I've received communication that I should attend this orientation this year, right? But uh, I'm surprised because my registration is not penalized. I was doing diploma in grade R last year. And then they said I should apply for bachelor's this year. Then I'll get absorbed to bachelor. So my registration is still pending. Uh, and this pass is still awaiting evaluation. Should I be worried that I'm receiving communication, but my registration is not finalized? Or should I have hope that since I received this communication, then there is perhaps a chance that my uh, registration will be finalized? Okay, thank you for your question, Peggy. Um, I don't think this is actually a communications uh, communications question, but I'll allow any of my colleagues who can actually respond to you to do so. Uh, colleagues, anyone who can answer Pegumus's question? Um, good morning. We are going to have a presentation from admin, from uh, yes. student assessment and student administration. That yes. question, they can note it down. Our presenters are here. They will respond to that question when they are doing their presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Pegumuzi, uh, yes, please, please, please stay on the line. Thank you for your question, my man. Just right. make sure that you stay through the program. We are going to be having DSAR making presentations. Um, um, hopefully, they'll be able to answer your question with their presentation. But if it happens that they actually not touching on the subject, you can actually ask that question um, after their presentation. Yeah? Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. Thank you, Begumuzi. Okay, guys, let us continue with our program. Um, thank you for all the questions. Unfortunately, we can't attend to all of them because of time. Um, orientation usually is a very long workshop because we have a lot of departments that need to, to touch on their services, you know. So, but because of time, we try to, you know, maneuver. And remember, uh, data is not cheap. 
So we try to move as fast as we can, but obviously we need to accommodate as much as we can, you know. But hopefully, in fact, I know this uh, for a fact. All the all the presenters will give me their contact details. So if there's something, so if it happens that there's something that you missed um, on their presentations or on this workshop, you will be able to ask questions going forward. Just give me a moment because my next speaker is actually not available as yet. But um, just give me a moment. I just want to check if she is available now because we're communicating a couple of moments back. And, um, oh, okay. She said, let me just check with my colleagues if they have received the video presentation. Just a moment, please. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you for your patience. Yes, uh, the video has come through. Um, our representative, who couldn't make it uh, live today, unfortunately, because of personal issues. Um, yes, she's having some challenges on her side, uh, but all will be well. But at least she has sent us um, a video that she has pre-recorded. Um, it's from our counseling services. I myself work as an administrator for the counseling service here at the Johannesburg campus. But this video will give you all the details about what we do as counseling. And you will actually see that if you stick with us from this first workshop, believe you me, you'll have a great study experience for the whole year because we have a lot that we still need to feed you guys with. We have a lot that we need to give to you guys. Uh, so now one of my technical directors will play the video for us. Um, I'm hoping because I, I've seen on the chat that some people couldn't see the video. Um, I know, you know, because of load shading, you know, a lot of towers don't function properly these days. So these kind of things do happen. I just want to let them know that we um, actually can see the video, most of us. Uh, unfortunately, if you can't see it, I'm sorry. Um, it's something that we cannot help ourselves, you know. But um, we'll do our best, you know, um, to make sure that you get all the information today. Uh, so as soon as my technical director is ready, we'll play the video. Guys, please pay attention. If you have a notebook and a pen, that, that's super. Make notes. Uh, please do make notes uh, because we're not going to repeat the presentation, unfortunately, you know. Uh, but if you feel that, you know what, I need to uh, dot down a couple of things that the presenter has just stated, do so. But remember, this is a school. So taking notes, you know, it comes, it's part of the business. You know, it comes with the territory. Uh, as soon as um, my technical director, Ms. Lala, is ready, we'll play the video. Please enjoy. Um, thank you. Good day, students, and welcome to UNITA. I am Mama Shimabua, and I'm a student counselor in Johannesburg Regional Service Center of Gauteng Region. Um, today, I am going to be presenting to you the student counseling in the Gauteng Region. Firstly, let me just introduce you to who we are. Uh, we are a director for counseling and career development. 
at Eskiam Pacheli building, uh, just opposite to building 14. And we are having four student councillors and one head of counselling in the Houghton region, based in Sunnyside, Florida, Johannesburg, Ekuruleni, and Baal. We specialize in counseling and career development services for all the students. I will shortly take you through uh, the services that we offer. Our services are offered by registered psychologists, student counselors, career development practitioners, trainee career guidance practitioners, which are our honors students in psychology and we are giving them a one-year internship uh, where we prepare them for the world of work in the field of psychology. We also have student mentors who are UNISA senior students in all various colleges and almost all the uh, qualifications that are offered in UNISA, helping students who are trying to find their feet in this institution. As I have mentioned that we are registered student counselors and registered psychologists as well as registered counselors. We adhere to the ethical principles of the Health Profession Councils of South Africa as our governing body. And I just want to indicate to you that all the discussions that we have with the students or our clients remain private and confidential. We have different services uh, which include career counseling. On career counseling, we help students with career planning, career choices, and career guidance. We also have um, services on psychological support where we help students who are struggling psychologically, who might have been having personal issues that they would want to one of our counselors. And we also offer academic support counseling to our students, especially that those that are, are already registered. And in this case, we have them with adjusting in the open distance in learning on various workshops and as well as on personal, I mean, on face to face uh, setting. We do have uh, study support where uh, we have students on how to manage their time, on study skills, stress, stress management, and many more of the services that we offer. On time management, of course, we understand that our students, uh, because of the various responsibilities, as we understand that UNISA is an open distance e-learning, they might struggle with time management, so we assist them with uh, managing time uh, effectively. And we also understand that that we utilize different study skills, especially that we understand that you will be doing most of the work by yourself uh, based on the fact that our, our classes are not on full time. We only do offer or, um, uh, tutorials to our students. So we also uh, help students who might struggle with study skills on uh, you know, uh, giving them information on different study skills method that they can utilize. We, we do have employability skills program, which we offer to students who might be in need of these services, especially the students who are on their final years and they now preparing for themselves for the world of work. And um, we also have uh, professional workshops that we run for students in different professions, especially those professions that might have uh, intense training, for example, like psychology, where you have to go through, um, you have to go through intent, I mean, interviews for you to be taken into master's program, or you have to go through honors and master's for you to be qualified. So we understand that most of the students might not have that information. Then we run those programs for them to understand exactly what is happening in their careers. If there are any uh, registration bodies that they need to affiliate with and so forth. Mm -hmm. 
our target group, we, we target registered students who are our main priority mm -hmm. and also prospective students who might be struggling with making career decisions or they just want to start with UNESA but they don't know how to go about. And we all have uh, we also target our exit level students who are in their final year or maybe in their um, uh, postgraduate level, helping them on how to exit UNISA and entering uh, the world of work in terms of preparing them for CV writing, for um, for interviewing skills and also on how to go about uh, marketing for jobs and on entrepreneurial skills. And we also target the communities, our schools and um, community development organizations where they run uh, different programs and we do our community work there. Okay, and how do we now deliver our services? Uh, we deliver our services on a face-to-face -face mode where you can visit any center in Gauteng, including Sunnyside, Florida, Johannesburg, Ekuruleni, and Val Agency. You will find one of our counselors there or admin officers uh, that will be able to assist you with the services that you might need. We also offer our services online on Microsoft Teams, Zoom, and Google Meet. As we understand that um, some of our students might not be able to visit our centers, then you can actually just email us or phone us. Then we will set up an appointment on Microsoft Teams, Zoom, and Google Meet, any, 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 any one that you might prefer. And of course, we, we can also um, deal with some of our some of our um, uh, questions or your questions on telephone and emails. And we are also available on social media through Houghton Region um, social media platforms. Who are our stakeholders and partners? Who do we normally work with? We work with our students, of course, and uh, UNISA colleges. We liaise with UNISA colleges, uh, where the admin uh, work is done in most cases. And we also work with external institutions to uh, help our students and communities and organizations, as, as I have mentioned earlier, that we also do a community work on, on, on schools programs or any uh, community development um, organizations that are there in, in your community. So we come as per invitations, we come and, and, and render our services as per the invitation indicated. As I have mentioned earlier that we have offices in different centers around Houghton. These are our contact details where you can find us. In Florida, we have Gafiso Megua as our student counselor, and they are his contacts. We also have uh, Mr. Magahani from uh, student counselor and in Johannesburg, of course, it's me, Ms. Mama Shumabua. And we also have uh, Ms. Masara Medipale, who is based in Val, and uh, Dr. Bitsuani, who is our head of counseling, and she's based in Sunnyside. Um, that's where you can actually, that's how you can actually access us. And those are our telephone numbers and our email addresses for you to utilize. Uh, you are more than welcome to use us in any services that you would want to get from us and we will always be there to welcome you. Uh, please enjoy your stay at UNESA and whenever you have any issues that you want to uh, run by us, you are more than welcome to come to us and thank you so much. Oh, let me say uh, a round of applause and uh, thank you to all our attendees who are actually showing love um, to the presentation. Yes, yes, yes. The hands keep on coming. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We appreciate it. As counseling, I uh, remember my line manager was actually representing all of us as the counseling and career development unit. 
Um, yes, um, she made a very detailed presentation. I'm hoping, especially when it comes to contact details, I hope that you are able to maybe make some screen grabs or screenshots uh, with the information. Um, okay, now it's time for the question and answer sessions. Okay, uh, Ms. Mabua is not available to take the questions, but we do have other uh, student counselors like Mr. Mekoa, who's in charge of the Florida campus, who is here, uh, who will be taking on the questions. Okay, let us see how many hands. Chloe, how many hands do we have now? Okay, I can see Tiffany plus six plus eight. Okay, you know you know how it is. We're only going to be taking three of the hands because we are behind by three to four minutes, to be honest with you. Um, okay, let us take the first question. Who, uh, Glow? We have Tiffany. Okay, Tiffany, let us um, give a moment to unmute and ask your question. All right, hold on. Good morning, Eunice team. And students, I just wanted to know, um, since I am in Cape Town, am I supposed to be in this orientation? Uh, good day, Tiffany. Uh, thank you for attending us uh, with us uh, on the orientation. This session is online, so it's covering the services offered in all the regions. Yes, it's hosted by Houting, this one. In the Western Cape are also going to hold their orientation uh, at some time, but they will also notify you. But if you find this one useful, you can still continue attending. So the invite went to almost all UNISA students in different regions. So you are not barred from attending. You can also ask and participate because the information that you are sharing here might be similar to what uh, the UNISA Cape Town is going to be doing. So how UNISA works is that all the campuses and all the regions, they offer almost the same service. Whatever we are presenting here, whether it's student admin or, or tutorials or counseling, is what we are also offering in all our campuses. Yes. Okay, Mary. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Tiffany. Thank you, KG. Glo, uh, uh, who's our second one? Okay, the second one we have Lesejo. Lesejo oh, Lese. Silaloke. Oh, okay. Let us give Lesejo a moment to unmute and ask the question. Good morning, everybody. How are you? Uh, we're good, thanks, Lisa. For you can ask your question, ma'am. I'm good. Um, well, I was asking that I am a short course student at Julissa. I'm studying practical labor law. So I'm struggling with um, downloading my study materials as it is not available on that study material icon. So I don't know how am I going to get it. Can you guys please assist on that? Okay, thank you for your question, uh, Lesejo. Okay, this is what's going to happen. Uh, Chloe, uh, do we have someone who will be touching on study material and downloading of stuff online? Yes, we have someone here, uh, Oba Geng. She will assist uh, the student with that question. Okay. Oops. Okay, so you'll need to log on to the MyUNISA platform using your student number as well as your password after you've claimed your MyUNISA account. And once you get into MyUNISA, um, under announcement, there should be like uh, learning resources. But I think the technology enhanced learning person will also address that and they'll probably give you a practical on how to go about downloading your study material. Uh, okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you guys. Uh, Chloe, that was the third one, or was it the second? Uh, that, was the, that was the second one. Um, the next yeah. one, I'm not sure how many questions do you want to take? Hey, to be honest, I just don't this. have the time because I'm like seven minutes behind. Okay, maybe we can take one last question and then we'll request the other questions to be posted on the chat. The chat Our okay, colleagues okay. are there answering all the questions on the chat. Um, okay. The next one will have Mobile Mukwena. Mobile, let's give a moment to unmute and ask the question. Thanks, Lo. Mobile. Morning. Good morning. Yes, you can ask your question. Yes, uh, I got a message to come and collect my study material at the Sunnyside Current. I just wanted to make sure if it was the one at Sunnyside Eskiam Pasheri building. Is that the building that I was supposed to go to? Okay, thank you for your question. Um, 
who who can who can take this one? Thank you for that help. Uh, can can I ask the question to be repeated? And then we also have, uh, as Obagin said, we have Mr. Nivesh Ramduth who will be presenting for TEL, especially for study, downloading study material and material. other things. Oh. So can, oh. can I have the question repeated, please? Okay, the question was, um, the student received an, a, a notification that they must go collect their material at Sunnyside. So they just wanted to confirm, because they want to go physically, they just wanted to confirm the address, the physical address. Okay, thank you. Uh, unfortunately, in our orientation today, we don't have people from dispatch, but uh, uh, in Sunnyside, I think students might need to go to the Eskiam Patlele building, the registration hall, to be assisted with dispatch material. So we have dispatch in different campuses, so students can be able to collect their study material. Uh, they need to be able to check and confirm the address that they received on the SMS, whether it's Florida or it's uh, Val or Johannesburg. So please go to specifically the, 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 the campus that is indicated because your study material has been cool there or the, the option that you chose. So if you chose a, a collection or, or you chose delivery to your respective address, it will be courier to that specific address. So make sure that you confirm, like the student who's asking about Sunnyside, you have to go specifically to Sunnyside. You cannot collect from any other campus except the campus indicated on the SMS. So for that one, you can also uh, forward us that uh, SMS that you got through email uh, to one of our counselors and our admin officers who will be able to locate and assist you where exactly you should collect. Thank you. Thank you, KG, for that response. Uh, I think what he wanted to know was Tabaya Eskiam Pasele, you know? So I think you've responded perfectly to his question. I know he's answered. He's very happy right now. Uh, thank you, colleagues. Uh, thank you, students. Okay, right now we have to continue with the program, you know? Uh, we're going forward. We, uh, let me see uh, if Mr. Uh, Inga Ketwa from the SRC is available. Inga, are you here? Inga, because I'm not seeing your Inga on the participants list, then what I'll do is I'll just uh, move on and uh, we'll so try to get over to Inga. Yebo? Um, Sunnyside seems to be having issues with connection. They are oh. struggling a little bit. Maybe we can have him later on, but we did communicate with him. He is okay. at the campus. Yeah, okay. he is at the campus. As soon as he's available, we'll alert you. Okay, Maybe thank you, Joe. I, I appreciate that. Thank you, Joe. Okay, as we move with our program, okay, Inga will come through at a later stage uh, to address you as our students um, and to tell you exactly what they do as the SRC. So let us continue. Uh, we now have a Miss Janine Priesman uh, from Facilitation of Learning. Uh, Janine, are you here? Uh, good morning, everybody. Yes, oh. I am here. Um, oh, I'm, I'm ready. I'm Miss um, Miss Lala Diksha will um, put on. She's already put on the presentation, and she will put it on. I have also done a video pre-recording, but I will obviously be available if there are any questions. But I will now ask Miss um, Miss Lala if she could just proceed and play the uh, the uh, presentation for us. Thank you. We appreciate that, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, then we'll wait for Ms. Lala to play the presentation. Thank you, guys. Good morning. My name is Janine Priesman. 
I am a regional academic coordinator in the Gauteng region on the Sunnyside campus, and I will be giving a presentation on the services offered in the facilitation of learning. The services we offer are online tutorial classes, academic literacy workshops, and also support to students who are differently abled. So what is a tutorial class? This is a space where tutors and students come together on an online platform and they engage on the content of a particular module that the student has enrolled for. What is the aim of the service? It is to make the learning experience easy and exciting, as well as to support students in their study journey. So how do you join a tutorial class? First, you enroll for the modules that you... You go to MyUNISA and on www.unisa.ac.za. Then each student is allowed to register a of four modules available in a center. The tutorials will be offered via an online platform and we make use of the MS Teams platform. Recordings and slides will be shared with the students of the classes if they so request. This is a service that is free of charge. What are the steps to enroll for a tutorial class? First, you log into MyUNISA with your student details. You click on My Admin. Then you click on My on Student Admin drop-down list. You select Enroll for Learning Tutor Classes. You click on Enroll next to the module that you want to take. Then click on the center name and you select the center name and then you submit. You repeat the process until you have selected all your modules of the, on the list of maximum four modules. The tutorial schedule and the timetable. Classes are normally scheduled on Saturdays between 8 and 4 p.m., as well as on weekdays after 4 p.m., so that we can accommodate employed students. Sometimes um, there is also there can be another arrangement made between the tutor and the students. Our next service that we offer is academic literacies, or as we call it, ACALIT. Now, what are academic literacies? This is a program where there is a facilitator who guides the students on the basic and general content as per their field of study. Students assisted on how to improve academic reading and writing and how to engage their studies. So what is the purpose of this program? It is to equip students with the necessary academic skills to become independent students. It is to enable students to understand academic language used in their specific college or modules and to equip students with theoretical knowledge for the preparation of the labor market. What do we offer in these programs for undergraduate students? We have for the undergraduate students, we offer reading and writing, as well as quantitative literacy in the reading and writing. It is about the academic reading and writing skills that students are taught up with. The quantitative literacy are numeracy skills for students who are registered for the models with numbers and calculations, for example, mathematics, statistics, etc. There are workshops, we offer you workshops, as well as one-on-one -on -one consultations for the students with the facilitator. We also offer accolade services for our postgraduate students, and that is to capacitate those students who are studying honours degrees, postgraduate diplomas, masters and doctoral degrees with their research skills. There are also workshops offered for them, and the workshops focus on things like doctoral proposal writing, research methodology, research instruments, sample and sample size. 
and etc. There are other topics as well. The workshops are offered as scheduled by staff members and the facilitators. The student can also request a one-on-one -on -one consultation with the facilitator if there are specific issues that they need uh, clarification. Facilitators are available weekdays and on Saturdays. So how do you access your schedules for two classes as well as accolade workshops? These schedules are all available on my UNISA. So first you click on my UNISA. Then you click on Students, Support and Regions. You click on Tutorial Schedules. And then you click on Gauteng and the drop down arrow and choose a center. Gauteng has five centers uh, Sunnyside, Johannesburg, Florida, Ekuruleni, and Waal. So you can choose one of those centers. You click then on the center and all the work playing there and you will see the times. The invite or the link will also be shared on your My Life email address. So students are booked for those classes and you will receive an email on, my, on your My Life email uh, to give you the invite as well as the link to the workshops as well as the tutorial classes. Uh, there is also an example of the link below. Okay, the range of supports. Service, a range of support services is the My UNISA and My Life email. It's vitally important that you ensure that you are registered for your My UNISA and that your My Life email is working. The My Life email and My UNISA are the ways that the university communicates with you. So be certain that those things are functioning and working. If you have any problems with them, please contact our uh, computer labs so that our digital learner advi learning advisors can help you to sort out the problems so that, that that is working for you. We also have in the tutorial services, we have a library, we have the academic literacy workshop, there's obviously the lectures as well that you can contact uh, for content knowledge of your modules. You receive study guides to use for your studies. You receive tutorial letters in which the lecturers will guide you regarding how to do your assignments and what your assignments will be. There will also be videos. You'll be the year planner and there's also counseling available. As I've indicated for the tutorial services as well, if the class has run, we record those classes and the slides that the tutorial Tutor has used in the tutorial class will also be made available to you as well as recording on request. As indicated, the Gauteng region has five campuses or centers, which is on Sunnyside, Florida, Ekuruleni, Johannesburg, and Waal. Now we're going to look at our students who are differently abled. The aim of the services for differently abled students is as follows. To create an environment where students who are differently abled will have full participation and equal opportunities. Teacher. It's to create an environment where Can students please pause the video, please? to disclose how they are differently abled and which services Thank can be offered that. and how can they be accessed. Teacher, can you please pause the video? Oh, thank you. Uh, fellow students, uh, please, please refrain from sharing your contact information on the chat box. This is a public platform. Ne? Please stop sharing your information there. Because what's happening is going forward, there will be groups that will be created, WhatsApp groups, online groups, etc. You understand? So the Copy Act actually doesn't allow us to, to let you do what you're doing. So you're actually not supposed to be doing it. I know you're eager to meet with other students so you can get assistance academically. I appreciate that. I appreciate uh, the intent. However, the method that we are using, we are not allowed to use. Please stop sharing your email addresses, your cell phone numbers, etc. Please.
Thank you very much. See, yes, you can continue. Thank you. Teacher. Okay, let us wait for Mr. Ms. Lala. You know, we're having connection problems. I'm also load shared here in Joburg. Yes, oh, thank you. It's coming through. Thank you for your patience, guys. Thank you, teacher. To create an environment where students who are differently abled will have full participation and equal opportunities with regards to teaching and learning. It's to create an environment where students will feel comfortable to disclose how they are differently abled and provide us with their specific needs for support. It is important that if you are in any way differently abled and if you indicate that on your registration form that you, in, that you do indicate that, that you provide us with that information so that we are then able to provide you with additional support that you might need. If you do not indicate, we are unable, obviously, to, to provide that support and we would really like to support you. What services do we offer and how can they be accessed? Okay. For differently abled students, you can request staff at the registration points to assist you with the complete of application forms and the application for fee reduction. There's a form for that as well. A special assistance form is available if you require any special support services, which you will submit in at registration. To check if the special assistance form has reached us, please contact your regional centre where you submit it, for example, Sunnyside, Florida, Val, Johannesburg, or Ekuruleni, so that we can and see what is going on. Being differently able may also qualify you for a Department of Labour bursary, which is based on your income. Our Oxford Department, which is our advocacy centre and resource centre for students with disabilities, can assist to motivate for assistive devices. You can also contact the region um, so that we can put you in contact with these people that can assist you. Based on the individual needs, students could receive study guides and tutorial letters in braille or in large print or in electronic or audio format. Request for electronic versions of prescribed books from publishers can also be done. Advice on low vision devices can also be provided to students who are partially sighted as well as orientation and mobility training that is also provided and available as well at the regions. Sign language interpretation services and basic sign language classes can be offered to our deaf students. You can contact the regional center for more clarity on that. Special computer labs for differently abled students are also available at the Gauteng Regional Centers and for more information, you can contact the relevant centers. There are computers in those labs that have uh, special software and some special hardware computers um, are there as well that students who are differently able can use. All of these services are available at the five centers. And we ask you to please contact the people at the regional centers in those those five centers for any questions that you have any clarity that you would like to to get please do not hesitate to contact us thank you now that was a lovely presentation thank you for that pre-recorded uh, session Ms. president um you can see the round of applause you know um it was very informative um a lot of our students were able to grasp um all the information that you intended for them to actually understand uh let us see if we do have any hands for any questions uh just a moment please do you know any hands 
Yes, Munabisi, we have a hand from Ms. Christy Mabele. Okay, thank you for that. Ms. Mabele, let us give her a moment so she can unmute and pose her question. <laughs> Ms. Mabele? Okay, Claude, because of time, I think we need to uh, just... Um, Who's, who's the second one? Um, the second one, we have Naledi Muta. Naledi Muta. You can unmute and ask your question, ma'am. Oh, sir, sorry. Naledi? I think she's still trying to unmute. Oh, okay. Let us give you a moment then. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can, ma'am. You can pose your question. Okay. Um, my question. I'm not sure if it's if it's aligned with what with the presentation that has just been given now, but it's just a general question about my modules. So I'm an NDP. I'm registered under the NDP um section. I come from Rhodes University, so my modules are nine. There's nine modules that I have. I need to complete my credits, but I'm not. I had emailed the counseling, one of the counselors um, last week about whether or not I'll be able to complete all my modules this year, because what from what I know, UNISA only allows you to register for five modules per semester. So I wanted to know, because I've already registered for five, because um, all those five modules are semesterized. There's first semester and there's second semester for them. Will I be able to complete the other four this year or not? Okay, thank you for your question, Naledi. Um, before we uh, respond to that, let me just try to address something here. Okay, okay. guys, I understand that you are new in this institution uh, and maybe I didn't uh, maybe specify or maybe come out clear when uh, I was telling you guys about the house rules. Um, what we did today is try to get all the relevant departments in the university. That is from people from registrations, assignments. Yeah, so there's nothing wrong with the question that you asked. It's just that I feel that it was not the perfect time for you to ask it. Because right now we were listening to a presentation from Janine from facilitation of learning, you know? Uh, so obviously we, we we are expecting questions that are relevant to what she does because now at the moment it's difficult to answer what Naledi is, is asking because she is asking a, a, a good question. Yes, it is a valid question. It's just that it, 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 I can say maybe it's in the wrong platform or the wrong timing. You know, we are going to have people who will be addressing registration matters and uh, they will also give you details because when if you say you sent a registration inquiry to the counseling department. You know, they, 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 they don't go hand in hand. You know, we don't do things that they do at registration. We don't compile curriculums. We don't have access to any registration documents or any kind of services related to that, you know. But I appreciate the questions. Don't get me wrong. Don't be afraid to ask questions because it only shows that you want to learn. I appreciate that. But I, 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 I want for us to be able to have um, a successful event and obviously all your questions answered but we need to timing you know timing you wait for the proper person to come through uh, and i think another thing that's that, that's going to make your life difficult in this regard is the fact that maybe you have joined the the workshop but you're not listening you know if you're not paying attention you won't know which currently who is presenting you know I, I, I hope I'm clear and I make sense in that regard. Okay, this is what's going to happen, Naledi. Uh, we should have someone from DSAR who would be in a better con uh, position to answer your question. Ne? Yeah, just 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 stay tight and thank you for your question. Okay, okay. Um, Glo, let me just see if we have. Remember, guys, you ask. You're asking Janine things that are relevant to what she does. 
She has been explaining what she's been she, what she does at UNISA for the past 20 minutes or so with a video that Diksha was playing, you know. So all the questions that we need we are looking for right now are questions that are related to what Ms. Pressman does. You know, if you have a registration queries and inquiries, we are going to have someone from registration who will be addressing such matters. Thank you, guys. Um, okay, uh, second question. Who do we have, Glo? Thank you, Mr. May. Next, uh, we have Amashe Mguni. But just before Amashe speaks, um, I would like to encourage the students also to make use of the chat, even those who are also watching on YouTube, to write the questions there. Their questions will be answered. There will be, we have our colleagues here um, on the meeting with us. They are all the questions. Unfortunately, we can't take all the hints, but we will try by all means to answer all the questions that are raised on the chat. So next up, we have Amashe Mguni. Oh, thank you, Glo. Uh, Amashe, you can unmute and ask your question. Let us give Amashe a moment, you know, connectivity issues. Amashe? Okay, Klo, I have to I have to move on. Um because of time, unfortunately, you know, it's not something I enjoy doing. I'm not dismissing who Amashe, but you know, uh, we need to move. Um who's after Amashe Klo? We have Pelo, Pelo Kosa. Okay, Pelo. Hello will be our last one because we need to uh, go forward with the program. Hello, are you here? Yes, hello. How are you? Oh, I'm well in you, hello. You can pose your question, hello. Hello? I think Upelo got disconnected. Actually, you know this load shedding issue there? Hey. Yeah, hey. You know what? Uh, guys, let us continue with the program. Uh, Glo, I'm not going to take any more hands. Ne? Uh, like uh, Gloria said, uh, Gloria is my colleague. Um, she's one of my technical people at the back. You know, uh, without her and Miss Lala and Homot and them, uh, this whole thing would be possible. So, uh, yes. They play a very important role because they are the ones who make sure that you guys get muted and muted, you know, the videos get played, et cetera, et cetera, you know. Um, yes. Uh, so we'll be moving on. Um, we'll be going back to uh, SRC representative, uh, Inga Keswa. Inga. It's actually Inga Keswa. I'm sorry for that. Yes. Inga? Yes, yes. It's Inga yes. Yes, Kim Inga I, I, I apologize for that, sir. Uh, are you ready for us? Yes, 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 my brother. The platform is yours. Thank you, Manier. All right. No, thank you very much. Uh, first and foremost, I would like to apologize. Um, you know, um, we had other engagements um, that we had to attend to. But nonetheless, uh, we are very much grateful for this opportunity that you afforded yet again to represent the student populace. Um, let me first start by greeting uh, Madam Regional Director, um, the management of the UNISA Gauteng Region Hub, members of the Regional SRC, members of the National SRC, staff members, and the uh, UNISA students in Gauteng at large receive um, our revolutionary greetings from the National Student Representative Council. Um, Ours is not uh, really per se um, to speak much, but um, as revolutionaries, we all have a moral obligation um, to stand up for injustices and be there for the voiceless. So it is um, with this where I quote um, one of the former president, Comrade Tabombegi, when he says that gloom and despondency have never defeated adversity. Trying times need courage and resilience. Our strength as the people is not tested um, during the best of times, but yet again, we still rise again. 
the world has been faced uh, with the serious crisis, which is the pandemic that we experienced over the previous years. But however, a lot uh, in the academics field has shifted and has changed, which has forced us um, to be fully online. And I must comprehend and applaud the UNESCO staff, the UNESCO management, the UNESCO Student Representative Council, and all other relevant stakeholders who made sure that we come out victorious. And in fact, as an OTL institution, we became uh, and held um, one of the most successful examinations online fully um, without any disturbances. But of course, um, there were some ICT challenges that were faced by the institutions, but we managed um, to rise above them. So it is with this great pleasure to um, appreciate the contribution that has been made and the great strides that have been made and taken by all the UNISA community and the UNISA Houghton community at large. But uh, I think it is of paramount importance that as the National SRC, we then um, present as to what is a student representative council. Therefore, allow me and afford me an opportunity um, to at least give a bit of a background what is UNISA Student Representative Council and how it's formed and how do you then form part of it. A UNISA Student Representative Council is the legitimate student representative organ uh, of the student body and it is the only recognized mouthpiece of the student body. We hope that and pray that uh, all students will then come forward with their grievances should they face any challenges. Um, the UNISA Student Representative Council is then formed, um, is then composed through various political structures and academic structures. You then form part of those structures, you become a political student activist uh, from there, then you hold your internal organizational processes uh, guided by your own constitution of your certain organization of choice. Um, of course, then that's then they will see you fit and the proper to serve in the student representative council. Uh, but over the past few years, uh, as I've also uh, noted that um, we were faced with challenges and it was very difficult uh, for the student representative council to be visible and also to be active. Um, as you would remember that a student representative council also is an enemy of management. In fact, in the eyes of management, student representative council members are deemed as rebels, and that is not the case. And we want to send a strong message and send a strong warning against management that ours is not to fight personal matters of management, but we all have an aim and a goal that we must represent all students at all costs. Therefore, we've got no other job or no obligation other than to represent the students of UNISA at large. So I would like to encourage all the UNISA students uh, in Gauteng in particular to visit um, the UNISA regional um, SRC offices. There's a regional SRC office in uh, Florida. There's a regional SRC office in uh, Tswane, UNISA Sunnyside. And uh, as the National um, UNISA Student Representative Council, we then oversee um, all UNISA campuses. Uh, without any um, waste of time, colleagues, staff members, friends, uh, and comrades, allow me to welcome you in this august university. It is uh, with great pleasure that we welcome you with great hands, and we hope that you will achieve all your academic endeavors and make sure that you continue to rise uh, the flag of the UNISA um, institution very high. And I'm glad to announce that in this 150 years in celebrating uh, the existence of this august institution, um, the university has pledged and has made sure and committed that they will be fundraising 150 million that will be then distributed and also settle outstanding debts of students who are in need. And we, as the Student Representative Council, will make sure that all those needs and all that money is not redirected or is not used or misused for any other um, 
objectives, but it is solely uh, meant for students and it is directed to students. So allow me to welcome you at uh, UNISA Gauteng. Uh, it is with great pleasure that you have chosen one of the biggest uh, university in the continent, but not just one of the biggest university in the continent, but uh, one of the leading institutions when it comes to open distance learning. Uh, we hope that you will enjoy. We hope that um, staff members will continue to servicing our students without any fail. And as an SRC representative, we dare shall not fail the student populace. I thank you. Welcome you all, uh, UNESA Gauteng Region students. I thank you. Oh, Ingo Sitata. Thank you, thank you, Inga. Thank you, thank you. Um, you you were coming bearing gifts. I didn't know. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Tata. Um, so any questions for Inga before he departs? Any questions? You can raise your hand. So you can get unmuted and uh, uh, ask your question. Glow, any hands? Apart from the applause. Yes, Munobisi. I have okay. one hand. I have a hand from Bohosi. Okay, thank you, Glow. Bohosi, you can unmute and pose your question to Inga. Let's give Bohosi a moment. Bohosi? Okay, I think maybe we can move to our corner if Buhosi okay. is struggling with connection. You can hear me. Okay. Oh, Buhosi is here. Okay, oh, no, okay. I had accidentally um, raised my hand. I just wanted to wave. If you guys can continue with the next person who would like to ask a question. Sorry for that. Okay, no, it's noted. Thank you, Buhosi. Uh, who's following? Akona. Akona. Sorry, Ako Mabona. Ako, okay. Ako? Okay, let's give Ako a bit of a moment. Hello. Hello. Hi, guys, how are you? Uh, we're good, thanks, man. You can pose your question to Inga. Okay, thank you. Um, I'd like to to understand um, the the SRC thing. How do I I I become a member or become a part uh, a part of a student um SE upper a UNISA because um now I'm doing an open distance learning so. I don't know whether these are was go go online or or something. Thank you. Okay, Captain Bonba, I do understand your question. You wanna join a representative council here, must be ESRC. Is that your question? Yes. Oh, okay. Thank you for your question, Ako. Uh, Inga. Thank you very much. Uh... Uh, it's indeed an interesting question. Well, it's simple. Um, you before you become an SRC member, you first have to join um, an academic structure or political structure of your choice. Um, then either there we then hold elections um, after two years. Um, then the parties that emerge will then hold their own branch general meetings or either their own internal or constitutional meetings that will then um, be able to choose within their members who to send in the student representative council. So in simple terms, um, you first have to join any structure that is recognized by the institution, um, be it an academic structure or a political structure. Uh, secondly, uh, it depends on the structure's internal constitution in terms of how do they then um, send and check the capabilities and capacities of those um, who are eligible to serve in the SRC. But uh, lastly, there is an SRC constitution um, 
section 2.4.1, um, it speaks about eligibility to serve as a candidate in the SRC. Um, it clearly states late that um, a student must have been a registered student um, for two consecutive semesters. A student uh, to, must have uh, been registered for two semesters, must have 10 modules, must have not been found guilty by any authorized um, body of the institution. So that's um, part of uh, section 2.4.1 of the SRC constitution and uh, also um, section 2.5.1 where it speaks about uh, eligibility to remain in office of course when you're an SRC member uh, even though uh, some people misunderstand that part but um, just in closing it speaks about to entrench the principle of academic excellence uh, you must have a 50 percent pass rate of your modules so um, which is in our political terms, we call it step aside. So that's uh, those are the requirements, my brother. Uh, are you going to know in detail? Thank you very much. I hope that uh, you understood very well. Thank you. The next one, Monobisi, that we have. Um, I don't know if Ako was able to unmute. Monabi C, did you? Um, colleagues, if I may, I don't think we are going to. His his mic is disabled, so I'm just going to try and sort that out. And let's give him a few moments. Um, my apologies for that. All right, I think he's back. Mr. May. All right. Yeah, now you can continue, sir. Sharon, as um, the core program director, I think you should take over because we are struggling to get Mr. May um, back on online. Um, the next question is from Ako Mabona. And after Ako Mabona, we will take one last question from Luke. Um, the surname is running away. Luke Simbarashe will be the okay. second one and we we'll close the questions. No problem, uh, Joe. Thank you very much. We can proceed. I can, I can just unmute and ask away the question. Thank you, Philip. Okay, thank you, guys. Um, I've already asked what I wanted to ask. Um, I think it's maybe because of the low trading and network thing. So that's why my hand hasn't been removed. Thank you. Oh, so you were answered. All right, that's good. Um, can we move to Tracy? Or was it the second one? No, the second one is Luke Simbarashe. All right, Luke, please ask a question. Um, Luke, can you hear us? Good. Please unmute and yes. Yes. yes, I can hear you. Good day, everyone. Day. Can you hear me? Yeah, please ask a question. I can hear you, Luke. Okay. Um, my question is basically based on the speaker who speaks. Oh, yes, I was disabled with road shading. They spoke about um, uh, registering uh, something that is um, four modules, and I'm doing uh, computer networks as for short courses, and it only has two modules. So I wanted to know what must I do since the module, since the course is two modules. 
Your question is posed to the previous presenter, Ms. Janine. Yes. Yes. And uh, Ms. Janine, are you here to assist? Ms. Priestman, are you here? All right. Um, in, in, uh, I'm pretty sure it's low shading issues. Our apologies. Uh, Ms. Quinin, Ms. Yeah. Yes, we can hear you. Man. Thank you. Yes. Hello. Oh. Yes, um, I can hear you. Hi, this is Janine. Were you looking for me? <laughs> yes. Um, there was a question. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, so the student is asking if ever they are registered for four modules. Um, if ever Luke can just rephrase this question again. Luke, are you here? Please rephrase your question yes, and then can assist. Please rephrase yes. your question. You, you spoke about registering and then the platform will accept you if uh the course it is more four or more stage, more modules. And the course that I did, that I'm doing, it only has two modules. So I wanted to know if it can you not know, disturb me, like with my course, like during the procedure. Okay, what you will see is when you go onto that uh, enrollment platform for the tutorial enrollments, um, and if you go to your to the center. Um, if you say click on sunny side, for example, and use that as the center, it will um, show there. You will then, if you have your modules, you will see then whether those modules are available because the tutorial classes are not available for e each and every module. There are only certain. Uh, because those are uh, uh, modules that the colleges have identified as high risk modules. And then we offer an additional tutorial class for those for those classes because they are high risk. But you will be able to see on the um, enrollment um, platform uh, whether those modules that you would like to do are available or not. If the modules that you are registered for are not on that platform, that means they are not considered high risk. So there will then not be tutorial classes for them. Does that no, answer your no question? Problem. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you. Okay, pleasure. Oh. All right. Thank you so much, Ms. Christman. Um, I think I'm gonna close the QA session now. Uh we are running behind schedule. However, we just wanna try and cover up the whole, you know, whole of everything that actually is a student concern. Um, we're gonna ask Mr. Pintus Nguna from Oxford. Um, if he can just uh Sure that he's here, Ms. Pinters. Mr. Pinters, are you here? Ms. Ankuna? I'm here. All right, thank you so much. The floor is yours. Um, do we have a presentation on our side? Or is it a live presentation? Uh, th th thank you so much. Uh, Good morning, uh, students and colleagues. Um, let me quickly upload my presentation. Um, okay, as mentioned, my name is Pintias Nkuna. I'm from the Advocacy and Resource Center for Students with Disabilities. Uh, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, today is the 14th of February. Uh, happy Valentine's Day to you all. Um, The Advocacy and Resource Center for Students with Disabilities is a unit within the Department of Student Affairs, and it was established to provide for the diverse needs of students with disabilities, not only disabilities that are visible, like uh, those who are on wheelchairs or those who are blind, but all disabilities. Uh, we provide a wide, a wide range of uh, services to students with disabilities. Uh, my colleague, uh, Ms. Pressman, uh, captured it in her presentation earlier including assistance uh, at the point of application and registration. Um, colleagues, we have a one page form whereby the student needs to complete uh, which we call special assistant form. This form case, uh, captures your need, your individual need. Like for example, uh, uh, colleagues, if you are a blind student, um, 
maybe another branch student also um, come in, you may find that your needs are different. For instance, a person who was born blind and a person who acquired blindness at a later stage, their needs are different. That's why in this particular form, we only focus on your individual needs because we don't apply the one size fits all approach. And again, in terms of study material, we provide material as per your individual needs. Uh, as you can see, uh, we have Ms. Mavaso, our sign language interpreter there. We provide the service as and when required. Uh, we also advise the my UNISA uh, and the my life test team to ensure that they accommodate diversity in the system. In the spirit of nothing about us without us, we established uh, regional forums for students with disabilities in an association as well, because um, we believe that students with disabilities might, must always have a voice. We provide training and orientation to blind and partial sighted students. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, while orientation refers to the of the environment, mobility refers to the techniques used to travel from one place to another. And um, from time to time, I'm sure you, you came across uh, persons who are using a white cane to move around, whether they are blind or partially sighted. This, uh, the, uh, these people or these students, they receive this orientation and mobility training in order to be independent. We also request concessions with regard to extensions of assignments. In cases whereby students with disabilities are unable to submit assignments because of their disabilities or medical conditions, related to their disabilities. We ensure that they are, they, they are not left out. We advocate for extensions. And by so doing, ladies and gentlemen, we don't uh, condone laziness. Uh, if you are able to submit assignments on a prescribed date, do so. But if you can't because of your disability or medical conditions, please uh, contact us, we'll assist you accordingly. We also assist in terms of applying for special examination arrangements. One may ask, what is this special examination arrangements? Time to time we find that students with disabilities may require extra time when writing exams because others you find that maybe they are slower when they are writing or they are new in the world of that disability. And uh, this a student will complete a one page form. This form must also be uh, signed by, by your doctor. It's not that we're taking you back to the medical model where persons with disabilities were seen as uh, ill who always need um, medical assistance. It's just because we're, we're in an open distance learning. We don't see you face to face. Then we need a confirmation and detailed motivation on how to best accommodate you. And we also advocate for alternative assessments just to give an example where students cannot type, then we, uh, we also arrange for uh, oral exams. And we continue to advise uh, our exam section to consider students with disabilities when they allocate resources. And in collaboration with our sister departments, and to so assist students uh, to apply for bursaries, it is a bazaar for students with disabilities, which caters for their assistive devices, depending on your individual needs. It could be a laptop with a screen reader. Screen reader, I'm referring to something like JAWS or NVDA. Laptops with text magnification softwares for students who are partially sighted. Motorized wheelchairs for our students who with quadriplegia. Manual wheelchairs for our students with paraplegia and those who are abstracted. Digital voice recorders, hearing aid. And I must also mention that uh, it also pay for sign language interpretation services because that falls under human support. And all, all funded students with disabilities, they receive assistive devices. I must mention that uh, if you receive an assistive device, you're still going to receive your allowance as a student with a disability. That is different from uh, mainstream students. And there's also an allocation for medical assessment whereby uh, you you can request the, the the funds to go to the doctor so that they can certify that you have that particular disability. We work with publishers 
and internationally to ensure that uh, students with print disabilities receive uh, electronic formats of prescribed books. In order to receive this service, there's a one page form which is an undertaking whereby you confirm that you'll only use this material for your studies. You won't open a small Yana's puzzle shop and sell it because in the past you found that some students when they receive these electronic copies of prescribed books, they will they'll, uh, sell uh, they will sell this material to other students, and that is a copyright violation. Please refrain from doing that. We conduct advocacy campaigns uh, about uh, the diverse needs of our students. Uh, we also provide training to our colleagues to keep abreast with disability uh, related matters. Uh, because we are available from the application until uh, the graduation phase. We provide support during graduation as well to ensure that there's accessible parking space for students with disabilities and the programs are made accessible as well. And then uh, if there's a need for sign language interpreter, we make sure that it's available. Just imagine, ladies and gentlemen, if it's your graduation uh, day only to find that you are blind and the program is in sighted, that will be a huge embarrassment to us and to you as a student. Therefore, we are going diversity. But in order for, for us to provide this service, please uh, request the service and we'll uh, assist accordingly. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I urge all students, whether you have a disability or not, uh, to join. Join hands as actually they encourage students not to conceal their disabilities. Because why do we respect your right as a student to disclose or not to disclose your disability? Students who does not disclose their disabilities may not receive or demand reasonable accommodation from the university because we won't be, uh, we won't be aware of your individual needs. As I said earlier, that we don't uh, apply the one size fit all approach. I must say that disabilities uh, are not always visible. We have disabilities that are, that are not visible. We have two forms of persons with disabilities, those who are born with and those who acquire disabilities. And ladies and gentlemen, I must say that disability can be acquired by anyone. As a student, you may be here today without a disability, then you can acquire a disability during your studies. And uh, those who acquire their disabilities during their studies, please disclose that disability so it will accommodate you. Ladies and gentlemen, all the information received is kept confidential. Uh, I must say this, uh, uh, colleagues, that actually staff members comprises of persons who are born with disabilities and those who acquire disabilities in their lifetime. The reason for bringing this is to ensure that uh, when you contact us, we have first-hand uh, knowledge of disability. Like as I'm talking to you, I'm T10 and T12 paraplegia, then I have first-hand experience of disability. We are also aware that uh, some students are reluctant to disclose their disability because of the fear of stigma and victimization. I must say, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you won't be stigmatized and you won't be victimized when you disclose your disability. You will receive the best support that we can provide to you. Um, in terms of the terminology, from time to time, you hear saying, uh, this is a disabled student or this is a disabled person. It is important to always put the person before the disability. If you a person is disabled, when do we enable the person? Because if you have an alarm system at home, in order for it to be effective, you enable it. Please, let us refrain from saying, uh, my fellow student is disabled. No, he's a student with a disability. And again, we hear people saying, a student is wheelchair bound, which means you sleep there, you but they do everything there. That is not true. That is a the student is a wheelchair user. And again, we hear people saying uh, normal normal students or normal people. If you say there are normal people, what do you imply about persons with disabilities? You you you, you imply the opposite. Let's refrain from that because students with disabilities are also normal in a different way. We are all normal. 
and please refrain from pushing a wheelchair user, whether you are from a class or from a library, without uh, requesting a permission from them. Because persons who are uh, using wheelchairs, they mostly their upper body to balance. When they wheel themselves, they sit in a particular position. When you come and push without talking to them, they may fall, of which that was not your intention. Your intention was to assist. And again, when, if you come across your fellow student uh, who's blind, do not just grab the student and move around, assuming that maybe the student is going to the, li the library or is going to the venue that you're going to. Please find out from the person on whether they need assistance. If they need assistance, then they, they will tell you then you, you can assist them. And for stu our students who are using uh, guide dogs, please don't pet these guide dogs. And whenever you are communicating to your fellow uh, deaf uh, student, don't shout. Just look direct to the person and talk gently. And these are the contact uh, details of our colleague. Uh, if you need assistance, then I'll, I'll read them loud just to accommodate our students who are blind and those with learning disabilities who may not be able to to read the screen. Uh, for the acting deputy director, you can send an email to sibanmm at unisa.ac.za. For academic support, you can send an email to me. It's gunapj at unisa.ac.za. If you request that material in alternative formats, including braille, large print, daisy, and audio, uh, please send an email to mooldld at unisa.ac.za. For sign language interpretation services, you can send an email to our sign language interpreter, uh, memavaso at mavasrs at unisa.ac.za. For students who are blind and uh, with low vision who require orientation and mobility, you can send a request to zikrasig at unisa.ac.za. And in terms of bursaries for students with disabilities, You can send an email at -E unisa.ac.za -E or actsuite at unisa.ac.za. Ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, I'd like to leave you with this quote as we are starting we are, we are, we are, with your studies uh, in this academy. Yeah? The quote is by Thomas Edison. Our greatest weakness lies in giving up. The most certain way to succeed is always to try just one more time. I thank you. Wow, wow. Um, yeah, very moving indeed. No, thank you so much, Mr. Nguna. Every time I hear this presentation, I always say one thing comes to mind. My disability is not my inability, of which we get it wrong all the time. Um, thank you so much, Mr. Nguna. Um, I'm going to open up for questions. Uh, remember, we've got five minutes to ask questions. I'm going to take as, as many as I can, maybe three, four. Uh, maybe I'll so you can assist with those questions. Uh, we do have questions. Um, I'll Gloria, any hands up? Okay, the first one that we have, we have Kyle Dau, followed okay. by Togo Zisi. All right, in that order, Kyle, you may unmute and ask your question. Okay. Yes, we can hear you. Please ask your question. Thank you. Um, hi. Uh, with Unisa, the studio provided for modules, but some modules don't have study plans. So how do you know um which lessons to complete before you're able of completing uh, assessment? Pardon. Um. Can you please rephrase your question? So with some modules, there are study plans, which will tell you which lessons you need to complete before you can finish your assessment. But some, right. modules, some modules don't have study plans. So how do you know what lessons you need to complete before you finish your assessment? OK, we, we do have presentations from student assessment 
which is going to be later on around 12. Um, I think most of you, your questions are around those lines. But then if you do have your tutorial letter 101, which is your engine for each and every module at UNISA, please um, put it next to you so that when they present, you can actually note down your questions. But my advice is stay in put. There's going to be a presentation around 12 from student assessment, which includes examination, assignments, and invigilation. Is that okay? Okay, thank you. Right. All right, thank you. Um, next question. Next one, we have Mtogo Zisi. Mtogo Zisi, please unmute. Um, Togo says, please unmute and ask your question. All right, I think uh, he or she is struggling. Um, Kia can we move to the next one? The next one is Ayanda Tlamini. Um, Ayanda Tlamini, can you unmute, please? Ayanda? Ask your question. Load shedding is a problem. Hi. Yes, we can hear you now. Thank you. Oh, you can hear me? Yes, you can ask your question. Uh, I was just asking if it is possible to apply for a reset uh, debt on campus, even if you're going to study online. Pardon, please rephrase. Is it possible to apply for for a res at UNISA at the Durban uh, campus, even if you're going to study online? All right, um, Ayanda, thank you for that question. Um, let me just provide some clarity to all who might be about us a question in relation to, to Ayanda. So UNISA is an open distance e-learning, e which is electronic learning, right? And which means you study online, everything that you do online. Remember, you applied online, registered online, paid your fees. Now, you don't have full-time classes. You only have classes which are fortnightly, every two weeks, for risk modules, right? So you don't have everyday classes. And in addition to that, UNISA does not provide accommodation because it's not a traditional institutional learning. So it means that you need to study well at home. Oh, okay, thank you. All right, um, maybe my colleagues can add if you don't understand. Thank you, Ayanda. No, I do understand, thank you. All right, thank you. Last question as Gloria. Okay, our last person will be from Ms. Mpasani Pulani. All right, Mpasani, please unmute and ask your question. Uh, thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you, program director. My question, my question based on um, ASWIT. I just want to find out to Ndate Nguna and the deputy director, Mr. Zbanda. Um, are they having any plan for um, user-friendly um, access to the computer lab in Florida? Because all our computer labs, five computer labs are on second floor papa building and then some or problems with the lift we do yeah. have if if we have students who are using wheelchair we're going to assist them or sometimes if maybe the student i know that i understand that we are open distance learning institution but we need to cater the user-friendly facility for students living with disability, particularly those who are using wheelchair in case of emergencies. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Ms. Mpasana. Very important day. Uh, Ms. Ankuna, can you come in, sir, and assist? Uh, thank you so much, colleague, for the, for the question. Uh, I must, last week, Thursday, I was, uh, I was in Florida for a, for a workshop where I was presenting. And then I've noted uh, the number of uh, challenges in terms of access. Then uh, we took them up with the relevant stakeholder who will be attending to it. And again, I must say that, that as Axuit, 
we are working, uh, we are in a process of ro rolling uh, accessible in an accessible venue. And then, uh, which means that in terms of the the Florida, the venue will be made accessible to accommodate all students because it does not only affect those who are on wheelchairs. Uh, at times, you find that the student maybe has difficulty in 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 walking. Then uh, it becomes difficult for them to to go to uh, the upper floor. And again, in terms of uh, where, when there's emergency, then want the students to receive quickly. That's why we're working on that to ensure that then the venue is uh, disability friendly. Thank you. Right. Thank you so much, Mr. Nguna. Um, Mr. Mpasan, are you are you okay? Um, can we proceed? Uh, Yes, program director. This is a follow-up question, uh, okay. Mr. Nkuna, Um, maybe how long would it how long would it take the, for this matter to be addressed? And thank you, actually, for identifying those uh, those uh, critical areas. But how long would you guys uh, take to address them? I know there are a lot of in interdependencies around, but we just want to have the estimate estimated time frame. Thank you. Uh, thank you, man. Um, if I may, if I may request that you, if you can send me an email, then I can share you the the documents so that you can see on the process on how far is the process, because you know that we have interdependencies, but then uh, the train is moving. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, we are all about inclusivity. Uh, Ask my colleague to prepare the polls. After the next presenter, we will have poll questions posted. Um, the next presentation is from Technology Enhanced Learning by Mr. Nivesh Ramduth. Please. Um, just give us a few minutes while they're still trying to sort out the presentation. Uh, but do we have Mr. Niversion or Mist? Are you here, sir? Oh, yeah, he is. Um, we're just waiting for your presentation to be played. There we go. Thank you. Mr. Nivers from Duth. Please. Good morning, students. Uh, firstly, let me introduce myself. I am Mr. Nivesh Ramdat, and uh, I would like um, to give us a few welcome you to this uh, session and thank you for attending today's student orientation. Today, I'm here to explain to you about the various services that the TEL unit uh, but do we have Mr. Universal or Mist? Are you here, sir? Oh, yeah, he is. Um, students, the purpose of the TEL unit, which is a technology enhanced learning unit, is responsibility is for integrating technology with teaching and learning and using technology to enhance the student's learning experience. Yes. 
students, the services that are offered by uh, the TAL you. unit are as follows. <laughs> Firstly, we have computer laboratories. Uh, these uh, computer laboratories are available at all our regional service centers. Uh, students are allowed access to these laboratories and they can use the computers in order to complete assignments, submit assignments, do research, and to also access specialized applications, which may not be available to them. For example, uh, our programming students who use specialized languages uh, to write uh, programs can access these uh, specialized programs on our computer systems at our regional service centers. Uh, in addition to the computer laboratories, we have video conferencing facilities. Now, students, these are video fed contact classes, which means we have a central uh, facilitator who presents a class, and this class is then broadcast over our video conferencing channels to the various regional service centers where students can book and attend this live feed of this particular training session without having to travel to the video conferencing facilities that allow students to remotely access or integrate classes for teaching and learning and attend classes at various regional service centers. In addition to the video conferencing uh, facilities, we also offer training to our students. So as the TAL unit, we have identified that a lot of students require uh, training in basic computer literacy, and this is needed because lots of our students uh, will be submitting their assignments electronically over the MyUNISA platform, and therefore they need basic skills in order to do so. We also offer training in MS file, uh, also, how to convert um, files Dixon, can you please to pause the video? PDF because uh, this is a format that we use uh, when we submit assignments. Uh, and also, we also teach students how to use yes, the MS Teams uh, platform. Um, Dixon, uh, we have a background feedback. I'm not sure from where if we can all just mute so that we don't have interference because we're hearing two sounds and the other one is up front, the other one it's, it's just after that one. It's just a reflection of what has been said. So if we can just have, um, yeah, just give you a few minutes to sort that out and then we can continue. Thank you so much, Diksha. We also offer training to our students. So as the TAL unit, we have identified that a lot of students, students the services that are offered by uh, the TAL unit are as follows. Firstly, we have computer laboratories. Uh, these uh, computer laboratories are available at all our regional service centers. Let me just extend my apologies to the house at large. Um, we're still trying to give our technical team some time um, to sort out the issue, but I do think it's YouTube background. Um, yeah, because I know we do have YouTube presentation as well. Um, Diksha? All right. computer laboratories. Uh, these uh, computer laboratories are available at all our regional service centers. Uh, students are allowed access to these laboratories and they can use the computers in order to complete their assignments, submit assignments, do research, and to also access specialized applications, which may not be available 
to them. For example, uh, our programming students who use specialized languages uh, to write uh, programs can access these uh, specialized programs on our computer systems at our regional service centers. Uh, in addition to the computer laboratories, we have video conferencing facilities. <laughs> Colleagues, um, I'm not sure if I lost sound. I'm not sure if anyone else has lost sound. Um, please just notify me by show uh, thumbs up if you do have sound. All right, I'm guessing that you do. Um, Diksha, all right, thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Nivesh, please unmute your mic. We can see your presentation. Thank you. Colleagues, um, can you hear me? Yes, Sharon, we can hear you. All right, thank you. Um, I think Mr. Nivesh is going to take over. Mr. Nivesh, are you here? Yes, I'm here. I keep losing connection. Um, please, if the presentation has been concluded, um, we can take questions because I lost connectivity for a moment there. So I'm not sure um, how far it went. Um, Diksha can share the screen. All right, all right, thank you. All right, um, Mr. Nivesh, are you sharing? Yes. Um, I'm not able to see anything from my side. Okay, let me just double check. All right. Yes, we can see the presentation. Thank you, sir. Students, the services that are offered by uh, the TAL unit are as follows. Firstly, we have computer laboratories. Uh, these uh, computer laboratories are available at all our regional service centers. Uh, students are allowed access to these laboratories and they can use the computers in order to complete their assignments, submit assignments, do research, and to also access specialized applications, which may not be available to them. For example, uh, our programming students who use specialized languages uh, to write uh, programs 
can access these uh, specialized programs on our at our regional service centers. Uh, in addition to the computer laboratories, we have video conferencing facilities. Now students, these are video fed contact classes, which means we have a central uh, facilitator who presents a class and this class is then broadcast over our video conferencing channels to the various regional service centers where students can book and attend this live particular training session without having to travel to the actual training site, be it in Pretoria or any other center. So the video conferencing facilities allow students to remotely access classes and attend classes at various regional service centers. In addition to the video conferencing uh, facilities, we also offer training to our students. So as the TEL unit, we have identified that a lot of students require in basic computer literacy, and this is needed because lots of our students uh, will be submitting their assignments electronically over the MyVisa platform, and therefore they need basic skills in order to do so. We also offer training in MS Office 365, uh, also how to convert files to PDF, because this is a format that we use when we submit assignments. And also, we also teach students how to use the MS Teams platform. And in addition to these services, students, we also assist students in uh, the activation of the MyUNISA and the MyLife email accounts. Students, you must remember that the MyUNISA uh, student account is the platform that you use in order to access your study material. So all students need to be able to uh, activate their MyUNISA accounts as well as the MyLife email account. Now, the MyLife email account is automatically created once a student has claimed his or her password for the MyUNISA platform. The MyLife email account is the official email account of the university, and all students are encouraged to ensure that they know how to access this account and to always access this account during the course of their studies in order to be uh, informed of any changes or developments either in their modules and or announcements from the university itself concerning their, their academic year and therefore uh, students are encouraged to visit these accounts, the email accounts on a regular basis. Okay, in addition to, uh, to assisting students with the activation of the MyUNISA and the MyLife email accounts, we also have uh, community digital access centers. Now students, these are partnerships with community centers that give UNISA registered students access to a computer and the internet for 24 hours per month. Now the digital access centers are privately owned enterprises who have a written agreement with UNISA to allow UNISA students to use their facilities in order to access the MyUNISA platform so that students who are unable to this regional service center of UNISA submit their assignments using their facilities. Now these services are free of charge to the students and the students are allocated a certain amount of hours per day by the Digital Access Center in order to do so. These centers are paid by UNISA for UNISA students to be able to access their facilities during these hours allocated to them. Technical support, uh, the TAL unit also uh, offers technical support for students with technical challenges that may hamper 
their studies. Uh, we also assist with uh, installing Office 365 on your personal devices should you have a technical problem uh, uh, regarding this. And also with connectivity, if students are failing to connect to our, our Wi-Fi, uh, students are encouraged to approach the TEL unit and you will be assisted with these technical uh, difficulties. Uh, we also provide services for persons with, with disabilities and uh, we have uh, computers with special devices and software that is tailor-made for students with disabilities so that they are able to also approach their studies with confidence. So students, those are the services that the TEL unit actually provides to all our students while you're at our regional service center. And uh, what you see now is all the available uh, uh, service centers that are in Gauteng. We have one in Pretoria, which is a Sunnyside campus. Then we have one in Kuruleni, Johannesburg, Val, and the Florida campus. So these are all our regional service centers that you can access should you be uh, close by. And these are the services, as discussed in our previous slides, that you can access if you need any assistance regarding your studies. Digital Access Center students, remember I referred to this uh, in the previous slides. These are the um, access centers which you have uh, access to in the Gauteng region. Remember, we have an agreement with these uh, centers for our students to be able to access the MyUNISA webpage using their facilities. Uh, these uh, digital access centers will allocate to UNISA students a certain amount of hours per day where they will be allowed to access the internet and the MyUNISA website in order to download study material or submit uh, your assignments. Students, this is now a list of our contact details of our various uh, regional service centers, the, the one in Sunnyside, Johannesburg, Ekruleni, Florida and Val. Uh, these are digital learner advisors and these are the guys who are actually uh, in the TEL unit and will be able to assist you with your queries. So please take note of uh, these uh, email addresses and should you have a, a query, you can email uh, any one of us at any one of the regional service centers and we From the TEL unit, I would like to hereby tell you thank you for your time in attending the orienta orientation for today and wish you all the best in your studies. Thanks. Uh, all right. Thank you so much, Mr. Nivesh from DIF. And wow. Um, yeah, this was part, a, a huge part of your learning process because everything is digital. Remember that. Um, let me allow a few questions from the floor. Um, the first five hours. Gloria, are you here? Yes, I am. In the questions? Yes. The first one we have Nomfundo Nchangase. All right. Nomfundo, please unmute. Oh, sorry. It's Nomfundo Nchali Nchali. Apologies for that, Nomfundo. <laughs> <laughs> My apologies as well. I see we have got plus minus 20 something questions. So we're just going to take the first four or five. Yes. Um, yes, yes. The rest, you can just please write your question in the chat box. Mfundo, please ask. Fundo, there's a feedback on your side. We're going to be unable to hear you properly, but please ask your question. Yeah. 
No, Fundo seems to be experiencing some problems with the network. I see her mic is going on and off. I think we will allow Ufenze, um, Ufenze Madonsela to ask the question. Uh, uh, greetings to you all. Can you hear me? Well? Yes. Um, how are you, friends? No. Yes, you can ask your question. Yes, we can hear you. Oh, okay. Okay, good. Um, my NSMA status says that I'm provisionally funded, and at UNISA, I am temporarily registered. I even <clears throat> received the modules for the first semester and the second semester. So I wanted to ask if I should be worried or not. Um regarding to me being temporarily registered at UNISA and provincially funded at NSFAS. Uh, Fenza, I, I keep losing you, um, but your two questions are in relation to being temporarily registered and provisionally ah. funded. Is it correct? Can you hear me now? Fenza, can you hear me? Yes, I can no. hear you. Your two questions are in relation to funding. The other one so is my, registration, my right? My, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So my worry appears to the fact that my space be referred to another student when NSFAS delays to pay while my state has says I'm provisionally funded. All right. Thank you for the question, Ofenza. We're going to have a presentation um, after the next one from student funding. I think all your questions in relation to funding and payments will be relevant then. Is that okay? It's understandable. All right. Just stay put. Thanks. I know we are having connectivity issues, colleagues, and my apologies from my side as well. And team, because um, this connectivity is a problem. Um, I'll Laura, can we take the next two? Okay, I'm not sure. I see Nomfundo's mic is 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 open, and I'm not sure if she's able to speak now. Nomfundo. It looks Don't like she's so. yes. Yeah. Uh, the next one will be Kolisa Majodina. Kolisa, please unmute. Um, Kolisa, are you able to unmute? Not really. Um, okay. Okay. The four, uh, I think we can take from Dingigo Grace. Dingigo Grace. Um, Dingigo, please. All right. Uh, Dingigo, please unmute. Okay, let's just give it a few moments. Ah, uh, mm, Lyric, can I please just close the Q&A and move to the next presenter? Because I think we are having connectivity issues. Noted. All right. Thank you so much. Um, the next presentation will be from uh, Ms. Pizeng Mukhaito from Library Services. Ms. Pizeng? Thank you, colleagues. Uh, wait for the technical team to play the presentation from library services.
Um, maybe while we wait for my colleague, we can take the last question from Tingi Kong. Um, Tinyeko, please ask your question while they're still loading the presentation. Tinyeko Grace. Yes. Um, hi, can you hear me? Yes, please ask your question. Okay. You are on today again. Uh, please unmute and ask your question. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can. Okay, Danico, you are muted again. Please unmute and ask your question. Is it unmuted now? Yes, I can hear you now. Just be patient okay. with the mic when you unmute. Yeah. Okay, so I was saying, I applied for a short learning course and I paid the required amount for registration. And then I received a statement from UNISA. But then when I try to claim the uh, UNISA login, it says that I will only be able to claim my UNISA and my life accounts uh, once the registration for the current academic year was successfully processed. All right. Thank you so much for that, Danielko. I think one of my colleagues can assist with posting the, the link to the short courses. That's where you can get the contact details for all, all shared learning programs. And then you get registered by sending them an email. I don't know if we have a colleague from that department who can assist here. Colleagues, anyone? Okay. Um, the one thing that will be easier is uh, that they share the link in the chat box and then follow that link and then choose your, your course from that list of short courses. And then you'll see the email from that particular link. You, you should just click the email, open the particular course. If it's HIV and AIDS, for example, you open for HIV and AIDS, then go down and see the contact details for the relevant department. And then they should be able to assist in registering you because I know short courses um, it's different from formal qualifications, but however, do stay in put. If after the presentation from student admin, you can actually ask any question they in relation to short courses as well. Is that okay? Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, can I get a thumbs up from Diksha if we're good to go? Sorry, Sharon. It looks like we are having problems with the audio from the presentation. If Ms. Pizeng is here, we are going to request her to unmute herself and maybe speak through the presentation. And with regards to the contact details for short learning programs, the contact details for people working with short programs has been posted on the chat. So the student can look through the chat, they will find the details for people that are working with short programs. All right, thank you so much, um, Aunt Claudia. Um, Ms. Pizeng, are you here? Ms. Pitang? Yes, I am here. All right, great. So what we're going to do is we're going to share the presentation, then you can just speak through it because we are having difficulties with the audio from the presentation. Is that okay? It's fine. All right, thanks. Um, colleagues, we may proceed. Thank you very much. Uh, good good morning, uh, Mrs. Pitang, representing the Gauteng Regional Libraries. Uh, our libraries are found in Ekuruleni, Johannesburg, and Sunnyside. On my presentation, I'm going to talk about the library services, the library collection, and the library catalog. Okay, we provide the following services in all our libraries. The lending service, the library training. You can request the literature search. We also offer research support. We have library commons in all our libraries. We also offer services for students with special needs. Okay, when we talk about the lending service, we talk about the borrowing, the retaining and renewal of library materials. Okay, and then the library training, 
we use online public access to train students how, on how to do basic search. Basic search is how to search for books or electronic reserves, which most of the time I mainly use for writing assignments. And we also train students on how to do an advanced search. That is how to search for online resources using the A to Z and the subject databases. You can proceed, Diksha. Okay. Our library training also, we do introduction to the referencing techniques. That is how to use referencing styles uh, to, in order to avoid plagiarism and copyright. Our trainings are advertised on the UNISA library website, our notice boards, on various social media platforms, and on the individual library libguides. For any additional information for your assignment or for your research topic, you can request a literature search from the library by completing a literature search form, which is available on the library website. Okay, for research support, uh, UNISA offer personal librarians which are responsible for supporting the academic needs of a student. Uh, at the beginning of each year, especially for MNDs, they will receive a welcome package from the personal librarian. The personal librarian will be introducing themselves, offering their support to the students so that they can be able to contact them uh, to request uh, information. The library has also an institutional repository whereby previous research outputs are available. Uh, I indicated that our libraries also have library commons. Uh, the library commons, we allow students to access or to search the library catalog, to access my UNISA or my life. We also allow students to type their assignments and for browsing the internet for academic purposes, meaning that you cannot do any other thing. You can not come and watch the previous episodes of uh, The Queen or whatever. We only allow internet for academic purposes. We offer limited services to students with special needs. The library has devices and li library materials that are available at various branches. And those materials that are not available at, at branch level are obtainable from the li main library by requesting using the library catalog, or you can use this mailbox, which is leap at disability at unisa.ac.za. And the materials that are requested will be delivered to the client's preferred address. Our library collection consists of the study collection, the prescribed collection, the postal collection, audiovisual collection, and archival collection. When we talk about the study collection, we talk about those materials that are academically or scholarly related. And the prescribed collection normally are those uh, materials that are prescribed by the lecturer. They can come in a form of a book or in a form of an electronic reserve. Our postal collection are normally materials that are housed at the main campus. The students request them on the uh, library website so that they can be posted to them. The audiovisual materials are normally the videos and DVDs, et cetera. And we also have the archival collection, which are mainly those rare materials. Uh, I normally give an example of the letter that was written by Nelson Mandela while he was still in prison. Uh, we have a letter, that letter, which is normally we it was it is housed at the, as, as part of our archives. So if a student want uh, that piece of uh, a letter, you can acquire it uh, through our online uh, archival collection or at the main library. 
Okay, uh, the library catalog is available on the UNISA's homepage on the internet using www.unisa.ac.za. It is also available on the My UNISA site. You can also download an app that is called APEC, where you can be able to search the catalog in order for you to find materials that are related to your study. You can continue, Diksha. Okay, this is an example uh, of our library catalog. I can move. Okay, the purpose of what the catalog help us, we are able to find books. We are able to find prescribed and recommended reading. We normally use the course code or the module code in order to search for that book. We are able to find the journals, which are in print and in electronic. You can also access the online resources such as databases, e-books, e-journals, e-dissertation, thesis, newspapers, and magazines. You can also access our online archival collection. We have signed a library partnership with the following uh, uh, cities. City of Ekuruleni, City of Johannesburg, and we are in the process of renewing a partnership with Mohali City. This partnership assists students who are staying within these municipalities to go and uh, they can request books online and the books can be delivered at the nearest uh, partner library where the student can go and collect. Okay, at the beginning of my presentation, I indicated that our Gauteng Regional Libraries are in Ekuruleni, Johannesburg, and Sunnyside. These are the contact details of Ekuruleni. It is found at corner R51 and Brazil Street in Devton. And the Johannesburg Library is found at 120 Fox Street, Marshalltown. And the Sunnyside Library is found in Building 14 at the Sunnyside campus. The telephone numbers and email address are indicated. Our operating hours are as follows. Monday, to we are open from 7.45 to 16 hours, January to December. And we are closed on public holidays and Sundays. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, um, Ms. Pitzeng. <laughs> well, we actually threw you under the bus there, but because you love what you do and you love what you're doing. Um, that was amazing. Uh, thank you so much. We will take questions, though, uh, from students. Uh, let's see. Let's go to 4-5. Um, ask Gloria. Okay, how's um, Gloria? Yes, Sharon. The first one we have Mzwandile Maslauli. All right, Mzwandile, please unmute and ask your question. Um, Mzwandile, are you struggling? Please unmute. And I also advise students, please write your questions in the chat box. Even after we close the presentation, it's easier for our colleagues to go back to the chats, read, and respond to the questions. Because I know connectivity is always a problem. Um, please unmute Mzandile. Um, that's okay. How's Gloria? The next one. Okay, the next one is O Foco. Foco. Okay. Oh uh Foco, please unmute. All right. Uh our students are struggling this morning. Um can we go to the next one? Remember yes, you you you're, you're let me just make this slight announcement. Your mics are disabled, but once you raise your hand, we enable your mic so you can actually be able to unmute and ask your question. Right? Okay. Ask Gloria. 
Yes, the next one is Dumisani Matlangu. Okay, Dumisani, please unmute. Hi, thanks. Thanks, Gloria, for recognizing me. I've been on the queue waiting for so long, but thank you very much. Apologies. Uh, uh, thank you, Chair. Um, so since so I, I've been noting down my questions down there. So I've mm -hmm. noticed that um you open the slot for a person to ask a question with regarding to uh, the person that's sharing, or let me say the yeah. speaker, let me refer to them as a speaker that's um sharing on that particular point. So now okay. I'm having um number of questions né, from different speakers. So now I will, what I would like to plea as a plea request is that is it possible that we maybe share the videos that are being presented and also the presentations for quick access um or let me say quick um um uh check up as for future purposes because now i'm having different questions for different speakers so okay that's what I'm um thank you thank you so much jim sani I, I i apologize for you standing on the queue for so long um however i i just been emphasizing that please write your questions in the chat box. However, the presentation will be shared with all the, those who have registered for this workshop, right? So if, okay. if you have registered for the workshop, you will get the link to the presentations, all of them. However, oh, okay. if your questions are really burning, out of five, ask one now, then the rest, please write them in the chat box so that my colleagues can assist. Is that okay? It, that's that's perfect, but the one that's burning oh. is, is for the previous speaker uh, for mm -hmm. the tell. So okay. currently I am an SLP um, student. Eh? I'm registered as an SLP student. So um, the person who was presenting um, on behalf of the tell has uh, mentioned that um, um, there'll be um, services like uh, your MS 365. Uh, for those who will be, um, since we all the way will be starting remotely. So my question is, because uh, the the speaker spoke about um, data centers, um, where labs where one will go to the lab to maybe have a uh, quick um, um, access to the um, uh, um, services, which is a uh, weight PowerPoint, so that to make it easier for the assignments to be rolled out. So my question is, some of us won't be able to come through as we are working currently. So will we have access um, assigned to maybe let's say um, my student number will it allow, allow me to use my student number to enable the MS365 as a service that's being offered as the tell? And also do I have access to the tell in overall All right. aspect? All right, thank you, Dumisani. Uh, Mr. Nivesh should be now missed to be able to address that question because he is the one from Technology Enhanced Learning. Mr. Nivesh? Thank you. Mr. Devesh, I don't know, missed. Let me just give him a few moments. Uh, not a problem. All right, Mr. Devesh, I know missed to actually assist with the question. Or any of our colleagues, um, you've heard the question. If you are, you do have the knowledge in request to that, please assist us. I don't think he's with us. Um, yeah, he's not in our midst anymore. Colleagues, if you can assist, please unmute and assist our student. But in the meantime, I do encourage you to write all your questions, even the bending one, in the chat box to Ms. Annie. And then our colleagues can assist you. Even Mr. Nivesh, where he's sitting, he can still access the chat box. So if you do ask your question and he sees that, he will assist. Is that okay? Like um, so what I did is I did drop my questions on the chat, but I've been mm -hmm. browsing to see um, the responses. But they've I, been I responded didn't... to? No, not as yet. Okay. Um, just please highlight it. Let it be the recent one. Is that okay? okay. Let, our I'll, colleagues can assist as well. So what I'll do is, since this is the opening one, I'll just um boldly highlight it now, send it through. All right. Thank you very much, Dimson, and for understanding. Um, Thanks, Charles, Gloria, can we move to the next student? Yes, Sharon, and I'm looking at the time. I'm thinking that yeah. maybe we should just close the questions, let the questions be on the chat. Um, so that we can be able to cover all our presenters on the program. Um, that's great. That's great. Let's do that.
students, please, please, let's do that. Um, we do have a presentation, a live presentation from student funding, Ms. Malti Pengayan. Ma'am, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, colleagues. Good afternoon. Is it afternoon? Yes, it's 12 mm -hmm. o'clock on the dot. Yes, there is. <laughs> Good afternoon. Can I just quickly share my screen? Yes, please. Um, you can do that. Colleagues, can you see my screen? Um, not yet. I'll let you know. Yes, yeah, we can. And as far as funding okay. presentation, thank you. Yes. My name is Maupi Benyanye and I'm from Student Funding. I'm just going to do the presentation about the funding that we have that we administer. Uh, the Directorate of Student Funding administers donor funds in form of study loans and bursaries according to the donor criteria. Our main aim is to assist needy and academically deserving students. Our vision is to be a beacon of the great hope and excellence to our students and donors. Our mission is to effectively and efficiently administer all funding at our disposal by ensuring that every stakeholder, particularly students and donors, receive high quality service. Directorate of uh, Student Funding administer NEFSOS, UNISA funds, as well as private bursaries. The type of NEFSOS funding, that's what I'm going to focus on for today. Because other funding, like we find that the other bursaries, like we've got the postgraduate bursaries, they are for honors, masters, PhDs, and I think the orientation is based on the undergraduate students. I'm going to go through the DHEAD Bazari, Disability Bazari, Funza Lushaka, Military Veterans, as well as TRC. I'm going to start by the NEFSAS one, which is the most popular one. Please note that uh, the applications are currently closed for 2023, and oh, then yes. the next application will be for 2024 intake. Uh -uh. Application outcomes for the 2023 academic year. Please note that the institution does not have control of or the access to the student bursary applications. Uh -huh. And therefore, UNISA cannot speed up any evaluation process of the applications. Students must ensure that all the required documents are submitted for the application to be evaluated. Institution can only finalize registration once NEPSAS confirms funding. Appeals that are currently open for those who have been rejected already by NEPSAS. New and returning uh, student must appeal directly with NEPSAS on the NEPSAS portal. Prospensity letters will be sent out to continue student on my live email addresses. Higher certificate who are twenty three funding. Please note that the funding for twenty twenty three will be migrated. Will be migrated from twenty twenty two to twenty twenty three. If you have created a new profile. It met academic criteria, and you're still within the income threshold, as well as you have not exceeded the N plus role. NEFSAS does not fund the following qualifications, advanced certificates, advanced diplomas, and DPs, postgraduate diplomas, honors degrees, masters, and PhDs. NEFSAS does not fund second qualifications, even if you have, uh, they have not funded you on the first qualification that you completed. Here, here. To move, if ever the student wants to move from one university to the next, 
student must only be the student can only be transferred once the, the institution has received the funded global list or the institutional portal is updated to the current year. Students are advised to finalize the registration until such time that we are able to confirm their funding. The reason for that is even as like at the moment, we haven't received the global list yet. NEFSAS has not opened the 2023 for institution as yet. So we are, when will those two processes happen? And then for those students who are moving from TVET colleges, to universities, you will need to have passed and completed the TVET qualification, and you must reapply for university funding. So automatically, you won't be rolled over to the, this current year funding if you are from TVET in 2022. What does NEFSA's funding cover? Applicants who are approved for NEFSA's funding are covered for the following. Tuition fees, learning material allowance, allowance or laptop, students don't get both. And then incidental allowance for those students who are registered for 10 modules or more in a year. The learning material uh, allowance is calculated as follow. If the student is registered for one to four, they will get 700 rents per module. Meaning if you've got four modules registered, you're going to get 700 rents times four, 714 to 2,800. The moment a student registered five modules or more, we allocate the allocation for the allowance for the whole year. The student will receive 5,460 for the year. The incidental allowance is calculated at 304 rent and 50 cent. That amount is received per month over 10 months. If you are 10 modules, you are going to get them in, you are going to register five additional modules in the second semester. You've already have the five in the first semester, meaning your incidental allowance will only start to be paid during the second semester. And then we'll backdate it to the from the first semester. Please note that all allowances will be paid into the student's bank accounts, and then the link will be sent to students' My Life email accounts to update the banking details. The following are not covered by NEFSAS. Supplementary fees, remark fees, late cancellation fees, they are not covered at all. We'll move over to our disability bursaries. My colleague, Mr. Pinter Sungosi mentioned, touched it on it earlier on today. The students must still apply on NEFSAS website like they do with the normal NEFSAS. The only difference would be the student must make sure that they attach the annexure A form. And then ever you are successful in your application for the financial aid you, you have to you have, you have received notice of your final approval amounts from nurses you may arrange for a purchase student disability unit at the institution please know that uh, the application closing date is in line with the nurses one so the application that also closed currently The disability bursary covers the following tuition fees, which are payable at the institution, learning material allowance, same as the NEPSAS, 700 rent per module, living allowance, same as NEPSAS, 304 rent and 50 cents per month over 10 months, cost of assistive device, and then the human support wherever is applicable. <laughs> We'll move, move over to Funza Lushaka Bazari. Funza Lushaka program is a multi-year program to promote teaching as a profession. Bazaris are available to enable selected students to complete a teaching qualification in identified subject priority area. Recipients of, the, of this Bazari will be required to to teach at the public school for the same number of years that they have been receiving the bazaar. 
application as well for 2023 for funds that are closed. And then who can apply for FUNSA? Any academically gifted young learner who is currently in grade 12, for example, grade 12 in 2022, 2023, and apply for 2023 to 2024, who wish to study Bachelor of Education. And then any graduates who are still under the age of 30 who want to complete a teaching qualification or enroll for a PGCE. Or any students below the age of 8 to 30 who wants to create a clear career or becoming a teacher. What does Funza Lushaka Baza recover? Tuition fees, accommodation including meals, books and learning material, and allowances for monthly living expenses. I will move over to DNB military veterans, but apply, you need to visit the www.dnb.gov.za with uh, all the steps as to how to apply that outlined thing. We can apply for DNB. Any military veterans and their dependents who wish to apply for education support benefit. What does the buzzer recover? It covers tuition fee, laptop, learning material allowance, as well as the living allowance. What are the, requ the documents required to apply for DNB buzzer? Certified copy of the military veteran ID document, certified copy of the dependent unabridged birth certificate or ID, a, co a certified copy of the dependent's a report, the great report. Tertiary student must also include their complete academic records, a copy of the acceptance admission letter from the university. I'll move over to TRC, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, who qualifies to apply for this bazari. A person declared a victim of apartheid by the Truth and Reconciliation Commission and their dependents and relatives. A dependent includes a person to whom the TRC identified victim has or had a legal or customary duty to support which include children, great ch grandchildren, and spouse of the identified victim. Please visit www.justice.gov.za for more details how, on how to apply. Please note that retaining tier RC students, what are the requirements? To qualify for the higher education and training assistance, the, application, the applicant must be a member of a household which earns less than, less than 339,000 the gross for the year, gross income for the year. The applicant must be a member of a vulnerable household. See criteria of a vulnerable household on the TRC website, www. Just ZA. The applicant who need assistance must enroll in a public university or TVET college for the undergraduate studies only. Applications must be emailed to TRC Education at justice.gov.za. TRC covers the following tuition fees, textbook allowance, meals and transport allowance. How does the registration proce process unfold once you are approved by NEFSAS? Firstly, NEFSAS will send us the approved list of students, new student and retaining. Student funding will allocate the funds to the students and activate the registration. Student funding will upload the registration data on NEFSA's portal after the closing date of registration. 
NEPSAS processed the data received, the, received from the institution, verified the following, registered qualification, N plus rule, as well as the income, uh, the, the income. Successful data is then linked and uploaded on an NBA report. And then once li linked, the allowances will be dispersed. For inquiries that are related to student funding, please email uh, to the following email address, gsf nefsas at unisa.sc.za. Please know that you've got a dedicated team that works on the mailbox daily. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much, Ms. Ma Ms. Pengeng. <laughs> My apologies for that. Um, we will take two questions. I know most of the students have questions from this department. Funding, 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 and funding. So we 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 can take two or three questions. And then, um, but before I take a question, there's been a question that has been trending in the chat box. They are asking if ever they can be able to get both ANASFAs and UNISA Basri at the same time. Maybe if you can clarify that, then I'll move to the hands. Okay. Unfortunately, you cannot use NEFSAS and another funding because that's what you call double dipping, and then it's not uh, allowed. Normally, if a student no, received NEFSAS and another sort of funding, the student has to choose one between the two. Okay. Not both of them. Uh, yes. Thank you for the clarity. All and right. Gloria, All right. thank maybe you so much. While, while you are still there, I've seen a question on the chat as well about the temporary registration done by student, and then the student is provisionally funded, and then mm. they are still not activated, wanting to know where to from there. Yes. Please note that uh, after the student does the TP registration and then the status is provisionally funded, UNISA must get the approval from NEFSAS, then we are able to activate the registration. NEFSAS keeps right. on sending us the list on a daily basis, and as we receive them, we activate those, regis those uh, lists as we get them. Okay, makes sense. Um, yeah, <laughs> thank you so much. Um, some of the questions are being answered in the chat as well. We can take uh, three hands. Oh, Gloria, is that okay? Yes, it's okay. There's so many hands. I'm going yeah. to just take them in order as they were raised. So the first one we have Lindile, Christina Mnyanda. All right, um, Lindile, if you can unmute and then ask your question. Lindela Christian, please unmute. You are unmuted. Please ask, ask your question. Yes. Okay. Um, yes. Can, can, you, can, you, can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Oh, all right. The thing is, I applied for NESFES, but then I was rejected. Uh, reason being is that um, they said that I have reached the, my highest qualification. But my point, my, my question is, it's the first time that I'm actually applying for NESFES and I've actually never used it before. And now I'm only applying for a short learning program, which is in the forensic investigative auditing. And I did not get the, the, the funding. Can I ask why is that? Ms. Bengeng will assist with that. Okay. Right, firstly, first part of the firstly, uh, you've got a qualification completed already, and then NEFSAS doesn't find the second qualification, irrespective who funded the first qualification. And then the second part of the the second part of the question is, please note, NEFSAS does not fund short learning programs at all. Only higher certificate diplomas and degrees. Oh, so okay. for the, yes, you are rejected because you've got a qualification already that <laughs> is completed. Okay, understood them. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, thank you, Christian, and thank you, Ms. Pena. You can move to the next question. 
I'll ask Gloria who's next. Yes. Um, Our next one in order of priority is Ufense Madonsela. Ufense, I'm hoping she will be able to unmute this time. Yeah, I'm hoping that I as did. well. Okay, yeah. that's good. You can ask your question. Um, yeah, I wanted to ask Horem, will there be any link if it happens that I missed the class attendance in order for me to catch up? Okay, um, please rephrase the question. I'm saying that will there be any link if it happens mm -hmm. that I miss class? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I'm saying that will there be any link if it happens that I miss the class attendance in order for me to catch up? All right. You mean if you have if you happen to have a class? Yes. Class. Will there be any link for me to catch up if I didn't attend the class? Um, for, okay, Fenza. Um, from my knowledge, I know that most visual classes, online classes, are recorded for those that don't have access to the internet by then due to load shedding or maybe data reasons or maybe any other reason. They are recorded and saved. But then, however, I'll let one of my colleagues also to provide clarity on that just in case I did not get your question. Yeah, you did get my question. All right. Um, how's Gloria? Um, do you want to add on that? All right. I was thinking that maybe Miss Pressman, if she's here, she can respond to that because she was representing um, uh, facilitation of learning. But if the student has been answered, then we can move on to the third question from Ako Mabona. And I'm going to request um, students, if you have raised your question for the first uh, presentation, the second presentation, please lower your hands because now your hands are historical and we don't know if you're still raising for the same presentation or the previous presentation. Please lower your hands. The next one is Ako Mabona. All right, before Kako comes in, can we let Ms. Prisman um, provide clarity on the question? Yes, thank you. <clears throat> yeah, if the student is enrolled for any other tutorial classes um, and she misses a class, um, then there will be a recording and the presentation that the tutor used will also be in the recording. So she will be able to catch up. She can then request to for the recording so that she can catch up and she can also then um, contact the, the tutor as well. The same goes for the accolade, um, the academic literacies the, with the facilitators. Those sessions are also recorded. And if the student is still struggling, she can also still then make a one-on-one -on -one appointment with the um, accolade facilitator to help her. So yes, if she's, if she, she can, there, there's a way of catching up, yes. All right, thank you so thank much you. for the clarity. Um, we can move to Arco. Mm, yeah, can unmute and ask the question. Good afternoon. Afternoon. Um, afternoon, um, uh, honorable speakers. Um, I would like to to ask uh, Ms. Maupi about my application with NSFAS. Now, I have a pending document that I need to submit. But the thing is, I'm struggling to get my guardian with regards with um, the document that's pending. So I wanted to to find out whether um, is there any assurance that um, if ever I upload uh, the, the document starting from today onwards, is there any assurance that um, NSFAS will let me proceed with my application even though they are closed? Thank you. All right, Ms. Bayenge can assist with that. Ms. Bayenge. Thank you. I just wanted to ask maybe does the student know which document is it and then where is the application stage at the moment? Um, my document is the only document that's that's pending for me is my my guardian's um statement. Yeah, I would say statement. The main meaning the proof of income. Yes. Yes, you can upload it on your profile, and then once it's uploaded, NEFSAS will uh, still assess the, the document as well as the whole application again. 
as to how long it will take still for you to know the outcome of that application, unfortunately, I cannot confirm that one because NEFSAS is the one who's dealing with that application on the site. All right, thank you very much. Um, thank you. All right, thank you so much. Um, for that, I'm going to close the Q&A because we are running out of time, but I do Sorry. have to ask. Um, Sorry, Sharon, yes. Just before you close, I have one question here. Can we just take this question? It's from the venue-based um, students who are attending here in Florida campus. If you can just take this one question and okay. then after we can just move. Okay, no problem. Okay, hi. Uh, I wanted to ask a question. I applied for NISFAS and when I log into my NISFAS account, it said invalid session. So I don't know what's happening. Am I approved or not approved? Okay, thank you. Ms. Bangangam. Thank you so much. Uh, I'll advise the student to, to try and log on the, on the profile again because sometimes when you get those type of errors, it means sometimes you might find that the system is down, that's a system is down, or maybe there's network issues. Because you, uh, if ever uh, you are getting an error to say maybe incorrect password, that actually gives you the indication to say recapture your password correctly. That one it just means that it's either NEFSA uh, system is down or there's network, network issues. If you keep on getting that error over and over again, I'll ask. Uh, I'll advise to get hold with NEFSAS so that they can check on their site what could be wrong when it comes to your own profile. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Australia, can we proceed? Yes, thank you. Just one more thing. I would like to request our presenters that have presented to, if it is okay with them, to please share their contact uh, details or contact numbers and emails where students can be able to reach them should they need to uh, reach them directly. They can share them on the chat and also Ms. Maupe can also just share with us the NESFAS contact details and the website also on the chat. Thank you so much. All right, thank you so much, Charles Gloria. Thank you so much, Ms. Benyanya. Um, I still humbly thank request you. our presenters to stay with us for a while if you can just so you can attend to student queries in the chat box. And much appreciation to those of our, of our colleagues who have been assisting in the chat box, because I know the chats are flooding with questions. Um, let me move to the next presentation from Ms. Daniel Ludic. However, your presentation, your presentation does not have audio. What's gonna happen is uh, we're gonna share from our side and we humbly request that you just follow through the presentation. Is that okay, um, Ms. Daniel? Ms. Lodic, um, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, I can hear you now. Uh, okay, yes, that's uh, fine. You can share from your side. All right, no problem. Um, colleagues? My technical team will share and then we can just proceed. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Danielle Ludic and I'm a student advisor at the Davidson campus dealing with student administration. Next slide. There's a range of services that the Student Administration Department in the region offers. Some services like the registration of undergraduate qualifications are fully decentralized, but in other instances such as refunds and credit exemption applications, we rely on the central unit and must escalate queries to the appropriate departments. Next slide. You should familiarize familiarize yourself with the college your qualification falls under so that you use the correct email address for queries, know where to check your curriculum and the education path to follow. Next slide. We want our students to succeed and to have a hassle-free registration process. Therefore, take responsibility and know your curriculum. 
Student advisors are available to guide the student, but curriculums may change from year to year, and it is important that students know what is expected from them to obtain their qualification. It is important to realize the difference between compulsory modules, those that you must take, and elective modules, those where modules are chosen from a specific group according to the curriculum rules. You need to distinguish between year and semester modules and be aware of pre and co requisites to ensure that you register correctly and plan your education path accordingly. Be aware of cutoff dates and pay the minimum fee on time. If you want to change a qualification or finish a qualification and want to continue to the next level, say for instance, you finish the higher certificate and want to continue to the degree, then you need to apply. Next um, slide. Semester one is no, now closed, but the minimum fee can be paid until 28 February 23. I saw in the chat that we've got students from short learning programs. This due date is for formal courses. Year, course, year modules will close on 20 March 2023, and you will then be able to register year modules only again in January 2024. Semester two is short this year, from 3 to 14 July. Make sure you register on time if you did not register for your semester two modules yet. During semester two, you will go to My UNISA to add modules. You will not register under the registration link. Many of our students complain that their registration take long to be processed. Why? When you register, you can get some of the following errors. This is indicated in the red on the registration platform. You can choose to ignore the error or to continue with the registration or to go back and fix the error. Remember that any error delay the registration as a registration staff member must manually activate the registration after determining if your module selection is correct. What are these errors? Prerequisite and co-requisite. A prerequisite is a module that you must pass before registering the next module. For example, you must pass Business Management 1A before you can register for Business Management 1B. A co-requisite is a module that you must register simultaneously, such as you have to do electronics theory at the, theory the same time as the practical. If you get a too many modules from a group or level, Error, that means that you chose too many modules under an elective group. Your curriculum has different groups, and from that specific group, you only need to register, for example, one module, and you are attempting to register more or you already passed some from that group. You can also get a final year wait not enough mm. error. This, there is a question when you register where it, you must indicate if it's your final year, yes or no. If you get this error, it means you answered incorrectly. You can only say yes if the modules you are registering is the very last for the qualification. In other words, if you pass these modules, then you have completed the qualification. Do not ignore these errors. Make sure if you proceed past an error that you have a valid reason for this. Next slot. And let me make it easy to the can we mute? Thank you. Familiarize yourself with everything related to your studies at UNISA. You will find your curriculum and to open your curriculum, select register in the top right corner of the web page. On the next page, select undergraduate. Now select for find your qualification. The page that page that opens lists your different colleges. So select the one applicable to you. Next slide. If we choose the College of Economic and Management Sciences, a page open where all the undergraduate qualification for the college is listed. Now select the qualification that is applicable to you. For example, I use the BCom in Business Management. The rules give important information on replacement modules, major combinations, and how to choose electives. Next slide. 
Here you can see the co-requisite and prerequisites are listed on the right-hand side of the modules. There's also an example of an elective group where only one module should be chosen. Next slide. You can choose to collect your study material at the regional service center or to have it delivered by courier. Your study material will also be available on, online on MyUNISA. If you have problems with study material not received, you can direct queries to dispatch at unisa.ac.za. Tutorial Letter 101 included in your study material contains important information about your studies and your module. Next slide. Students sometimes want to register for non-degree modules. It is important to understand the purpose of NDP modules and the implication thereof. Remember, non-degree modules cannot be transferred to a qualification at a later stage. It is exactly what the word says, not for degree purposes. You cannot build a qualification with NDPs. It is for personal enrichment, or it can be as a requirement for a postgraduate studies that qualify for the honours qualification. Another reason is to complete the qualification at another institution. If you only need one or two modules, there's permission from the other institution to complete the modules with this. Make sure when it is the... Just going to tell you about the student account. So, um, you can pay at on my uni, so make an EFT or pay at the FN. Use your student number and the correct allocation. banking details on UNISA's website or on your account statement. You can apply for into student assessment. Can I put two questions? Ask Gloria. Okay, Sharon. Um, in there, Muelase. And then after Jabulile, we oh. will have Mobile Mukwe. All right, um, Jabulile, please unmute and then ask your question. Yes, my question was in regards of uh, in the university we have three uh, proctoring tools that we use to ensure that our um, examination, our academic has integrity. Um, we have Invigilator app, we've got Iris and the Moodly proctoring. Uh, from these proctoring tools, um, we have students which are inmates and also students with a um, who are differently able. Let's say, excuse me. Hello. Excuse me. If you can, uh, yes. Um, I'm sorry to disturb you. If you can just put your presentation on presentation mode, because I'm not sure if it's only me, but I'm not able to see the full screen. What I'm saying, it's personality. Yes. Can you um, see? Me? Yeah. Very good. Okay. Yeah, it's on the slide that says important. Yeah. E e Protaring. All right, we're okay. good now. I think it's the first slide. Okay. Yeah, thank you very oh, much. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, um, and then uh, we, as I was saying that we have students who are inmates and students also who are differently abled. Uh, with these two categories, those students are exempted from using the proctoring tools. So, but they, however, need to send in the application for exemption uh, at exempt disabled at unisa.ac.za to make sure that uh, when the time for them comes to write the exam, that you know that they're exempted, meaning they don't have to use the proctoring tools uh, so that they can be able to write the exams without any interferences. And then with the three proctoring tools that we have, as I've already stated, that we have a Moodly proctoring tools. With the Moodly proctoring tools, it's uh, used for the MCQ, the multiple choice questions. Uh, it's a quiz uh, that uh, is, is used by the university, except by the College of Science and Engineering. Only that college doesn't use this proctoring tool. And in this proctoring tool, it requires our students to have either, either the cell phone or the laptop, which is enabled in their camera, meaning that when they switch off their camera, they need to enable this app so that as they're writing, it can be able to invigilate them. And it is used as a deterrent, as I've said, as stated earlier, to make sure that their academic has integrity, meaning that a, it will be worth the paper that is written in at the end of the day. Because if the student is coping, then it will have a problem when the student applying in the workplace. 
and they will say, no, from UNISA, no, those students are copying a lot, so we don't we don't trust their their qualifications. So it is ensuring exactly that. And then we also have an IRIS app. This is the one that is used only at the College of, of, Sci of Science and Engineering and technology. Uh, it only uses a laptop. So when the students are re uh, registering from any of the modules in the College of Engineering and Technology, they need to have a, the laptop. It's a requirement. And the university doesn't buy it for you. So you'll have to get it yourself. It's very important for that for students to know that because we have a difficulties at the end when the students are supposed to be taking their exams and they come and tell us that no, but they don't have the laptop. So how are they going to be downloading this app? Because it only requires a laptop. And uh, that laptop needs to have a certain criteria to make sure that it will allow the IRIS app to be running at the background as the student is writing to make sure that the student is being invigilated. And then lastly, we have an invigilator app. The invigilator app, um, it's, may, it's used on a cell phone, meaning the student doesn't need much with this one, and it doesn't require a lot of data. You only need the data to start your exam with it, and also at the end to upload your work or the data which was kept. Uh, a captured while the student yeah. and uh, this will allow students to take the uh, exam to make sure that the person who is registered as our student is also the one who's taking the exam and will be randomly recording their microphones uh, while the student is writing. So we uh, request students to minimize uh, noise interferences when they write exam. We do, however, understand that some of the students they don't have um, uh, they they still go to internet cafes to make sure that they have a, a network uh, when they are writing their exams. So some of them might be writing in the internet cafes, but uh, if the student they are able to, especially seeing that the university does give the student data, we'll really appreciate if the student can write in a very quiet place to make sure that the exam is not jeopardized. And then it also takes the geolog uh, location of the student to make sure that the student is not writing to any student closer to themselves. And this uh, app allows it to be downloaded on their cell phone, on Google app stores, and also on I, um, on I Apple stores and Huawei gallery. The student can use any of this. And then um, we've got this video. I'm not sure if our time allows. Um, This is how this app, uh, the Invigilator app, is taken. Um, Venue-based. Okay, sorry for that, colleagues. So these are the three apps that we are using in the university. And as I've already stated, that the cell phone is less invasive uh, preserves the academic integrity. The student can download it, and the student must, and we do really emphasize that the student do go through the demo exercises of their different apps that they will be taking to make sure that they ready themselves for the examination prior to the day of the exam. And uh, it, uh, I've also stated that it takes a uh, random selfies, the microphone checks, and also the ID copy of the student who is writing the exams and also the student is then uh, requested by the app or prompted by the app to take to upload the answer script at the end of the session to make sure that the student doesn't do anything after the uh, the exam time has lapsed so all this data will then be sent through when the student click on the uh, finish examinations um on the day of the exam the student needs to uh, register on the Invigilator app using their My Life accounts, not any personal account, uh, email address, or uh, the Gmail uh, accounts, but only My Life account. And even if, um, also, what we we'll really like to emphasize to students that even with their communications to the university, due to the Poppy Act, if you really want your query to be attended promptly, please don't use your work address or 
your work email address or your Gmail accounts, but rather use the My Life account to make sure that uh, you are answered when you communicate with us at university. This is to make sure that we don't get into your work, uh, your private space, because if you use My Life account, then it's for UNISA purposes. And student is already alluded that student needs to have an internet connection thing and the code which is sent by the lecturer to within the 24 hours prior to the exam however it is scannable 45 minutes a uh, 15 minutes before the exam uh, 45 minutes meaning it's 15 minutes before exam and 30 minutes within the exam the student needs to have already scanned this app to make sure that they are invigilated as they write their exams. Um, okay, I've already went ahead of myself with these ones, um, but I do believe and hope that um, the regions will also invite us closer to examinations because we cannot go through the whole details of, of, of the, when the time comes, we think that they will call us so that we give students before they write the exam. Um, and the student, when they have difficulties with uh, the app, they can always contact our WhatsApp number on 073-505-8273 or call us on our help desk, uh, examination help desk, it's 011-471-2433. And as they said that these presentations will also be sent to the students, so you don't worry about these contact details, the presentation will be given to you uh, to keep safe. And also there are hyperlinks there where you can go and go through on how to upload and uh, on how to download the, these different apps that I've also spoken about. And thank you colleagues, if there are any questions, I'll take them now. All right, thank you so much. Um, maybe if Ms. Mudira can just jump in so that you can take combined questions, if it's that okay. Okay, no problem. Thank you so much, Mr. Mudira. Right. You can come in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Can you give Ms. Muloisani the sharing right? Ms. Muloisani, may um, give her the sharing right? Muloisani, may. All right. Um, all right. We'll do that. We'll do that. Else, Gloria, please assist. Sorry, let me block. Um, hi, Sharon. Can you hear me from your right. side? I seem to have lost connection yeah. on my side. All right. Okay. Can you hear me um, now? I just sorted that out. Yes, I can hear you. Um, Ms. Mary, right, can you share the screen now? It's sorted. All right, thank you. Um, Ms. Melissan, you do have the sharing rights now. Um, you can just proceed. Awesome. Uh, Mr. Medeja, the screen is All presented right. now. Yeah. I can see it from my side. Thank you. Thank you very much, colleagues, and thanks for the patience to everybody in the meeting. My name is Ren Stamudira, representing DSAA. In particular, I'm representing a summative assessment. And let me take this opportunity.
opportunity to thank those that have organized this uh, uh, sitting for us to engage with our students. Uh, I will be talking um, about some formative assessments and all, all that is to do with examination. Mary, if you can go to the second slide. Amongst others, colleagues, what we do at the uh, examinations department is that we are also assisting students with disabilities. Mary, if you can go to the second slide. Mary, can you hear me? Can you move to the second slide, please? Hey colleagues, I'm going to present. Um, am I audible? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, uh, can colleagues, hear you. I'm going to proceed uh, because Mary is also to present. Thing is that at summative assessment assisting students with special and those have to apply annual in writing before February and for the thirty first for October, October, November examinations or for January, February. Um, in, in, in process of applying for an extra time or for extra assistance in terms of their examination, they need to submit a medical certificate specifying the nature of their disability for extra time and also having a dedicated email address which actually serves for that purpose, which is exams disabled at unisa.ac.za. Apply for this are uh, all students that are having a special need that needs to be granted a particular uh, assistance in terms of extra time or extra assistance in terms of their patients. Let's proceed to the next uh, slide, which talks to the examination rules. Right, should you will actually be coming to tell us as to who qualifies to write the examination. It's all students that have been admitted that they've actually uh, submitted to compulsory assignments upon or on the day of the examination. Students are being granted 15 minutes uh, for the downloading of the question paper before the start of the examination. That is 15 minutes. Before. Once they finish the, their three hours or four hours of writing, they are uh, granted to, to do the upload in part. Right. Very key, very important. Please listen to this one. Immediately after you have done your work as a student, you need to pledge that uh, the work that has been submitted was never discussed with anybody, was never plagiarized, you have never taken anyone's work, was never discussed. Mm -hmm. Then what you need to do is that at the end of your answers, you need to pledge, and that pledge will assist in ensuring that yeah. and giving us confidence that this work is only yours and only yours as prepared. As we move to the next slide, Mary. Uh, having, you know, um, the three of uh, submission platforms, uh, that is my UNISA, the official submission platform, contingency link, and the Invigilators app. When do we need to use the contingency link? Yes like it is now in South Africa, that we are having or being plunged on a daily basis on load shedding, that students will be granted a contingency link to submission. Our daily hardworking academics together with administrative staff on daily basis, they are checking as to how many downloads have happened at the beginning of the examination, what are happening, so, uh, realizing is a challenge or a gap that uh, come the uploading time, they are very less system challenges, then they are able to contingency link for the students to submit uh, um, or on the link not to be disadvantaged by the power outages or outages or whatever that might actually be happening in their respective spaces. In Vigilators app, it is compulsory for, uh, for what you call for the examination scripts to also be submitted 
on the Nvidia Data app as that is being used as, um, as, as, as a platform that could as and when, should there be anything unto on the two uh, links that I've just cited that will also be relying on the Nvidia Data app to get the student examination scripts. Noted, the one that is uh, what you call on red, we are saying no email submissions. You do have the email address of the uh, primary lecturer. You do have the, the what you call the email addresses. That means they, they will not be that should you uh, in, in times of uh, to send your examinations by an email, it will not be marked. That should be noted and forewarned is forearmed. As we move to the next slide, Erin. Right, um, the, the, the student that uh, are for, for, that are doing um, postgraduate uh, uh, examination, they, they are able, as in when they could not write their examination due to unforeseen circumstances, they could actually apply for an agrotet and that is um, agrotet or special examination which is granted only in terms of rule 18 in my exam my administration approach so the undergraduate students are granted two attempts what do i mean in the name of k the university have granted all undergraduate modules uh, two attempts meaning you students that are registered for the first semester 2023 to write in May, June, should you fail the examination in May, June, or should you be absent to write examination in May, June, June for some circumstances, circumstances, or should there be you know, power outages, or should you be in a load shedding on the time of the examination when the examination is written? You must not be worried because the university will be granting you another you know, a, a chance to write examination when? In October, November 2023. I'm going to repeat this and slowly, colleagues, all undergraduate modules uh, that are registered in the first semester are granted two attempts, and the first attempt will be in June 2023, and the second attempt will be in October, November, and that will be the last attempt. What do we mean? I've just noticed something in red there to say, no set opportunities. What do I mean? Should it be that you have some challenges again in October, November, that you are not able to submit your, 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 your examination, then it will mean that you will have to re-register for that module as October, November will be seen as the second and the last opportunity. So people, we should always against that should you have an opportunity to write now in may june please do everything possible to ensure that you write that examination as you do not know what right. might happen tomorrow right the next slide will talk about the final mark right mashutu will be telling you about the assignments that is to be submitted for you to be a that contributes in most of the time at least 20 percent towards the final mark nice. and the examination that will be right come May, June after you have been admitted, majority of it will be counting 80%. So the two will actually, as per the formula that I've just shared with you, will actually contribute to the final mark, and the final mark will be either a pass, a distinction, or a fail. Right as we move, once the examination has been written, there are those that will not be happy. Why? One, because of the outstanding results, if there are outstanding results, please feel free to contact us as DSAA, as we should be able to investigate and be able to reasonably uh, revert back to you in telling you as to what is happening with those results, and we'll actually gladly assist you with those uh, examination results. The second thing will be, uh, is it reflecting its from examination from your examination results? If that is the case and you feel strong that you have the examination, and not only strong, but you are also having evidence. I should be sharing an email address where you should actually send that particular query for us to be able to investigate and invest and um, uh, respond accordingly. Script rejected. Uh, Pilisi, we have already spoken to you about the 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 the, 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 the proctoring tools that we are using. Students. As it is the rule for, for students to adhere to everything that is to do with proctoring tools, then should you not adhere, should you not do as per 
what we are saying as on the timetable, as on the, our rules, then your scripts will be rejected. Now, now, do you feel aggrieved that you did everything, but we are still saying scripts are rejected? Please feel free to send us an email in saying that I did actually use the app, and here is the evidence that I've actually had after that. But remember that non-usage of the app, your scripts will be rejected. The DC pending, um, the 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 our app or the apps that we are using have got the functionality to can actually record the, the voices in the room in functionality to can tell us in as to where are you, what are you doing, who's assisting you, and all of that. Just for you to know and for on this for armed again. All those students that are found not to be doing it by the rules, not to be towing the line, not to be doing it by the book, then the results will be uh, will be withheld. A formal uh, hearing will be rescheduled by the university, and communication will be sent to those students from the office of Mr. Shivambo, that is the person that is heading our DC office. And uh, immediately after they've actually sit for the hearing, Hearing, the result thereon will be passed, and the maximum sentence in most of the cases for those that can commit this could be five years or otherwise. So we need to be very careful that we don't need to be assisted, we don't need to be asking assistance, we don't need to be going on on on, on internet and then taking answers as they are, as that will be regarded as plagiarism. As I move on, there are those examination scripts that are upon uploading are corrupt. Uh, what would happen is that the lecturer will be able to open the examination script. A procedure is that examination uh, script will then be forwarded to us as we do have the functionality to repair those scripts. Should it be that the script cannot be repaired in the first examination, the students will be deferred to the next examination uh, opportunity. Remember, I've spoken about the two attempts. Then it will be referred to the next examination opportunity. This, um, this time around, next, next op examination opportunity will be October, November, and then it is then that uh, the students will be given another opportunity to resubmit and for and wishing the luck to say that it shouldn't be corrupt again and the script will be um, marked and the results will be released. I, uh, and B, very important, should it happen that your script is corrupt and cannot be repaired, and in the second attempt, you must know that you need to re-register the module. As I've said earlier, always make it a showcase that you use the first attempt because you don't know what's going to happen in the second attempt. As we move on, uh, DSAA is also responsible to process the, the post-results processes. What are the post-results processes? You have written the examination, you feel like grief that you have done, uh, you, the mark that you have had is not sufficient, or you felt that you have got a distinction in the, the mark where, where we actually, uh, you know, at least otherwise, you can apply for a remark, and then that remark will be sent to a, an external examiner for the external examiner to, to mark the script again and the results will be released after that in final the results for remark are final we are also offering a service of purchasing of examination script if you feel like you didn't you didn't like what uh, what mark you have had once again you can purchase your script convince yourself that is one or two that you feel you could have given a mark and then perhaps proceed with the remark Remember, with remarking, you've got a mark that we have to attain. It starts from 35 to 49, and uh, it's, uh, it's 68 to 74 for distinction purposes. Now, please note this one. As in when you are even with everything that has to do with summative assessment, with everything that has to do with remarks, purchasing of scripts, um, the, 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 the whatever inquiry that we have, and maybe might have been marked absent and all of that. Please use this email address. It's very helpful. Our ever committed uh, personnel should be able to respond to you in a reasonable time, which is exams at unisa.ac.za. That is our uh, email address that you need to use as in when you need anything that has to come from DSAA. 
uh, program director, allow me to close the, my presentation with a, with a quote from our former president, Tabum Begi. I open a quote. Those who complete the course will do so only because they do not, as Fatiki said in, convince themselves that the road ahead is still too, too long. They inclined to steep the loneliness impossible to bear and pride itself of that full value. I close quote and I wish everybody in this sitting in the form of students all the luck and wishing to see uh, the path going up uh, all the way. Thank you. Wow, thank you so much. Good luck to them indeed. Thank you so much, Mr. Mudeja. Um, we will have the last presentation from student assessment from Ms. Mashudu, if she's still able to, to share. And then we can have combined Q&A session. Okay, afternoon. Uh, Ms. Uh, am, I, am I audible now? Yes, thank you, thank you. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. My name is Mashudu Chikakisa. I'm one of the supervisors in assignments department. Please allow me to apologize on behalf of, uh, of the Department of Student Assessment. We are having network issues. We've been running around different offices trying to get network here. So I had to, I'm using my own data now. Hopefully you will hear me until the end. Can you see my presentation? Um, no, not yet. Just, yeah, click on it. Yes, yes, I'm seeing it now. Just put it on presentation mode and then we should be good to go. Thank you. Okay, I've already uh, indicated my name. I'm one of the supervisors in assessment department. My focus, the, 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 the plan was that I was supposed to present first before examination department and the invigilation department because I cover the formative assessment, which is the first process before we get to invigilation and summative. So assessment is important part of the teaching and the learning. So I'm not going to read, we will share the slides after the, the presentations, but the goal of the formative assessment is to monitor the student, uh, to monitor student learning, and also for the student to be able to identify the strength and weakness, weaknesses and target, target areas that need work. So with, for, uh, with regards to formative assessment, I understand it's the new students. Formative assessment, it's assignments. So those assignments that the student are expected to submit so what happens is the lecturer create an assessment plan. Assessment plan, it's like a plan for the whole semester or the whole year where the lecturers are planning how many assignments the students are supposed to submit. They also, on that plan, they also indicate the due dates, when does the, the system is supposed to open for submission and when it's supposed to, the system is supposed to close for submission. So in most cases, this information, the information that is on the assessment plan, they, the lecturers include it on the tutorial letter. So on the tutorial letter, there you will get the information of the lecturer, who the module leader is, where to direct your queries, maybe for a specific models. And what is important, it also indicates the weight per assessment. We've got two weights. We've got weights per assessment, and we also have the weight or the percentage towards the final mark, the calculation of the final mark. So for each assignment, maybe for a certain module, they will say assignment number is 50% weight, and assignment number two, it's 50% weight. Combined, is 100%, and with examination, it's also 100%. With continuous assessment, continuous assessment is those assessment where there is no exam. You submit assignment maybe from one up to seven, depending on how the lecturer planned his or her module. So if it's one up to seven, you will submit from one up to seven, and your final mark is calculated based on the weights that is allocated per assignment. Like maybe assignment number one, you will have 5%, assignment number two, 30%. So depending on the weight. So it's important for the student to understand this because when they send queries to assignment department and say, my final mark was incorrect, you must base that on the weights that are allocated per assignment. All assignments are submitted online. Hard copies or email submissions are not accepted. So I just included also this slide because we are dealing with the new students. You log on to my UNISA, you have the credentials already. Somebody, I think the other presenter already indicated how you are supposed to log on to my UNISA. So immediately after you enter your, your, your username and your password, it takes you to this page. 
So we have got three types here. We have got my modules, my modules 2021 and my admin. Then you need to go to my modules. When you click my modules, that way the system will direct, will redirect you to the my modules link. So when you go to the my modules link on top, it will show my modules. When you click the drop down arrow, it will show the modules that you are registered for. So for some reason, if one of your modules is showing on your registration that is processed, but is not on the link, you are more than welcome to contact assignment department. So all your modules are supposed to be on the drop down list. Okay, the types of assessments, we've got single file upload. Those are the traditional written essay type assignments. We've got quizzes and then we have got forum. The quizzes and the forums, for more information, especially with the forums, you can communicate with the lecturers. But the quizzes after submission, they are marked automatically by the system. So the, 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 the queries with regards to quizzes cannot be referred to the lecturer. The lecturer does not mark quizzes. Quizzes are marked automatically by system. So those queries, you need to refer them to assignment department, unless if it's a query regarding the, the content or the question, that one of the questions on the, on the question banks. So submission and the routing of assignments. Assignment are submitted on my modules, as I've already indicated on the previous slide. After you submit the assignment, direct uh, uh, immediately that assignment is routed directly to the lecturer for for, for, for marking. So students are encouraged to pay note of the due dates that are indicated. Some of the lecturer will include that information on the tutorial letters, but then if it's not there, when you log on and you go to a specific shell, it will show you when the due date is. So please make sure that you submit the assignments on time because the submission portal, that, that is a button that shows that you are able to, you are supposed to submit for that, to submit that assignment it will only be available before the closing date. So if you try to submit an assignment after the closing date, when you log on and you try to submit an assignment, you won't have that link that allows you to submit uh, the assignment. So they are only available before the closing date. So before submitting, uh, we want to encourage the student to verify the content. We are getting a lot of queries from students who have submitted the wrong content. Maybe you are trying to submit an assignment for PVL 3704, but when you select the file, you select something else. So after with the Moodle system, you can go back and check what you have submitted. Please go back and check that you have submitted the correct submission, the correct file before the closing date. And you must, you are also encouraged to keep proof of the submission. Plagiarism, I think, uh, I'm not sure if the other presenters already covered that, but that is more to do with the academics. They will tell you what they refer to as plagiarism. That is copying from Google, copying from the other students. Assignment uh, department, we, we deal with issues. They Um, Mr. Mashuri, I'm not sure if that's from my side, but we are having interference. Yes, that you can send to our assignment department. You must be sending that I said to you. Those are saying I'm not somewhere after the assignment. That uh, can you hear me? Can you hear yes, me now? Now we can hear you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Okay. Okay. I don't know where I was. Um, not sure if I covered the submission and the routing of assessment. Did you get that information? Yes, I did. Thank you. Okay. Okay, the next slide I was trying to indicate to the students that the questions, the, the queries that are supposed to come to our assignment department is something to do with the submission portal where the student is trying to submit, but there is no a, a link or a, or a submission button that allows them to, to, to attach a file or something like that. Those queries, they can re, they refer them to assignment department. Also, if there is a mark on my Moodle system, but that mark is not reflecting on my UNISA, they can refer that to us. Uh, when they log on to Moodle, if on the drop down list, as I've already indicated, the module is not appearing, that can be referred to assignment department. 
if you get, we use shells on my models, you will see there's a shell for assessment one, there is a shell for assessment two. If you are supposed to submit assessment one and there is no shell for assessment one, you can refer that to us in assignment department. Also with the examination admission, if you don't have examination admission, you can refer that to, to assignment department. I think the other thing that I didn't uh, touch, that I forgot to touch is when, uh, on the assessment plan that is created by the lecturer, the lecturer will indicate it differs depending on the models. So the other lecturers will indicate that students are supposed to submit one assignment to get examination admission. Others will say you no know, students are supposed to submit four assignments to get examination admission. So we are encouraging the student to pay attention to that. Normally they will put it on the tutorial letter or on the announcement so that before you query with assignment department, you know that this model on the tutorial letter, they want four assignments for the student to be granted examination admission. So it is very important to understand how many assignments or the percentage. Some of the lecturer will say a year mark. If a year mark, they want 40%, even though you submitted only one assignment, as long as you get 40%, you will be able to, the system will grant you examination admission. Okay, the extension of uh, uh, assignment, and we don't encourage the students' assignments late, but then if there is death in the family or something like that, the student are supposed to communicate with the lecturer. From the Department of Student Assessment, we extend the whole module with the request from the lecturer or the management, university management. So we don't uh, extend the whole module based on the request of one student. If one student struggles to submit an assignment, that student must communicate with the lecturer. The lecturer knows what to do from that side to open for only that one student. So these are the things that you can refer to the lecturer. Anything with regards to the content of an assignment, it's a lot of modules, so DSAA, we don't know the content of each and every module. So if it's something to do with the content, you refer that to the lecturer. Something to do with the individual extension, I already mentioned that, you refer that to the lecturer. If they view 50 percent and they don't assist you with that, you must refer that to the lecturer. And the marking progress, that's when the student is inquiring about the assignment. I submitted my assignment two months ago. It's still not marked. You must make send those queries to the lecturers. I think uh, in one of one of the students asked a question regarding the study plan. That can also be obtained from the lecturer. What I've noticed is that the lecturer, they, they, they put the study plan or the, I don't know, the topics or something like that in different places. So that's why we are encouraging the student to communicate with the lecturer. Others will, will put it under announcement. Others will have shelves that shows the study plan or the everything regarding the studies. So for those, you need to refer to the lecturer. I've already covered the examination admission. The email that you need to send your assignment related queries to, it's assigned at unisa.ac.za. We will share uh, the, 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 the code, the slides, and the other contact numbers, we will all, they will be on the presentation when we share the presentation. We are allocated to different colleges. If you can see on the, screen, on the slide that I'm sharing now, we've got different managers responsible for different colleges and the supervisors under those specific colleges. Please make sure that you refer your query to the relevant person because sending a query that is supposed to come to to go to maybe the supervisor for CSET for engineering department and you send it to the College of Law, it only delays you getting the response to that query. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for that presentation. Um, and yeah, connectivity is an issue everywhere, but thank you for trying so hard to actually get the information out there. Very important. Um, I'm going to take questions from students now, but however, we lost um, our Gloria, who normally assists us with, with the questions. I'm going to take Hi, hands. Sharon. Al Sharon. Gloria, are you back? Oh, okay. Yes, I'm back. All right, I'm thank you. <laughs> I'm um, sorry, back. Sharon, due um, to time, we will not be taking any questions. Uh, we encourage the students to write their questions on the chat. 
and we also advise that they can continue writing the questions. This this chat mm -hmm. will still be available even after the orientation, and our colleagues are there to assist and to respond to questions. So please don't be discouraged. We will respond. We are running out of time. We are going to be load shedded here at two o'clock. So most so I think it's time that we take our last speaker and then we can do our evaluations. All right, Oscar, Ryan, no problem. Thank you for that. This is going to be a last speaker for the day. However, students, please stay for the poll feedback after the last speaker. And then obviously for the vote of thanks, right? Um, we are going to have a presentation from the Ms. Yanda Febana. Yes, Sharon? yes, Ms. Pelosan. Sorry, can I just yes. jump in quickly? I see there is one question all the students keep asking. Yeah. If I can just clarify it quickly before the next speaker. That the reason why yes, the students are getting a message that says that their email is not confirmed is because the app will only um, confirm their email addresses uh, in April. So they need to apply or download the app in April when their uh, information has already been loaded into the app because currently they are still new students. They haven't written any assignment for them to know which student qualifies for an exam or not. So if the student can okay. just note it. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you so much from our side, Ms. Pelusa. Um, we can have the next presenter. I'm not sure if she's here. Ms. Zianda, oh yeah, she has been here. Um, from first year experience at UNISA. Um, Ms. Zianda? Um, Ms. Yanda, the floor is yours. Okay. Can you kindly request um, Ms. Lala to, to, to upload the presentation for Ms. Yeah. Yanda? Yes. We understand that learning at an ODEL institution may be isolating. And to ensure that you do not feel lonely, we at the SRU will regularly keep in touch with you through our weekly emails on important information and upcoming academic support programs. Because your success is the core of our services, these emails will cover various topics such as preparing for assessments and exams, Remember, it is important that you claim your MyUNISA logins and activate your MyLife email account. The FYE support site was created to make access to important information and support material easier. On this site, you'll find resources that will assist you in your first year journey at UNISA. Here, you'll also find the FYE student toolbox, which is a quick guide to all the resources you may need to become a successful student at UNISA. These resources include online student orientation. At the SRU, we understand that during this period of transitioning to an ODEL institution, you may feel overwhelmed with information. We therefore created an online orientation video that you can access at any time to ensure that you are well prepared for the open distance learning environment and give yourself a head start. Another point, UNISA helps students with their academic reading and writing skills through the academic literacy program. 
which you can also access using the site. Here you will also get schedules of workshops that are provided by UNISA Regional Services near you. You will also get self-paced how-to videos through our massive open online courses, MOOCs for short, on how to become a successful online learner. As you can see, making use of the site will ensure that you have a successful first-year experience. The SRU, forging a generation of successful first-year students. All right, thank you so much from the first day experience. I'm sure you all feel welcome to UNISA and welcome again uh, to the University of South Africa. We are not going to take any questions because we are running out of time. However, we are going to post the poll questions. This will help us to actually see where you lack. It will help us evaluate the entire workshop to see where we can improve as the region. Um, I'm going to ask my colleagues to post um, the poll questions in the chat box and also we'll share an evaluation link which can be accessed if you are having challenges in responding to the poll questions. Um, colleagues, please assist in posting the polls. While that's been done, I'm going to ask um, Ms. Ms. Mr. Kahiso Mekwa to just prepare himself as he's going to give us the vote of thanks for this wonderful um, workshop. All right. Um, the first poll question has been posted. Uh, there's only been one response so far. So just click on it and click submit. I can see on my side the number of responses. However, I cannot see who responded. So don't worry about what you say. You are safe. You're not able to see your names. Okay. Um, I'm seeing the responses are raising so far. Um, all right. Mr. Mekwa? Uh, thank you so much, uh, Program Director, uh, the esteemed Mr. May and Ms. Sharon Tevele for the challenge job that you did uh, in steering this ship. Firstly, I'd like to also apologize for the delay and the length that we took in running this program. So we really want to appreciate you, all our students, for your efforts, for attending, for participating and to all our esteemed speakers. Uh, you have been so beautiful and thank you so much uh, for attending in different centers. We could not attend in one center in Johannesburg because of some technicalities that happened there. So we really apologize. Uh, we, 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 we asking you, we asking you uh, that, uh, uh, we asking you to, give us feedback uh, on the poll that you are doing and then also how we are doing in order that we can improve on our services. So we're asking you that you continue engaging with us, different departments, as Gloria indicated that you can continue posing your questions. Please do so. And then we're looking forward to being part of your studies and seeing you graduating at the end of the day. So uh, as the Houghton region, we just want to welcome you. And then also much appreciation to the SRC who showed support and who said there's no other way that we can change our circumstances if we remain dormant. So we need to participate in the, uh, the education of our country and in the changing of our environment and our circumstances. So let us continue shining. Let us continue asking for help. Let us not stop asking questions because uh, if we do not ask questions, we never know. And there are no stupid questions. So you can ask any question to anyone and you become a better. So I want to thank the whole team, the background team, the technical team that was assisting, making sure that all the centers are connected and all the students even outside how they 
village in, in Western Cape in Zimbabwe. So I just want to thank all the speakers from different units, uh, from the Mr. Mbuke, who's the acting deputy director at the moment. We want to appreciate you. We want to also thank our manager, uh, uh, who have been part of us and assisting us uh, in everything until we implement it today. So we want to wish you all the best in your studies and God bless. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Makwa. Thank you for the much appreciation show to our colleagues, our esteemed guests, which are the students. Um, however, I'm gonna stay with the students until they submit the responses to the question. So the third question is being that the information was was relevant to my own context, work, or studies. So students, you have about 500 students. We can actually do better than that, right? So this, there are eight questions in total. The fourth question is that um, rate the following according to your own aspect. The overall quality of the event. Was it excellent? Was it satisfactory? Or was it poor? Right? There is also going to be an evaluation. If you are struggling to respond to the polls, just um, click the evaluation link that will be posted in the chat. Um, can we have the fifth question, Diksha? So the fifth question reads as follows. Um, rate the following as well, according to your aspect, the length of the presentations in total, like all the presentations. Was it satisfactory or poor? That is the fifth question. So I'm expecting to see numbers going up. I've got an average of 71 responses out of 500 students at most. So yeah, let's keep responding to them. Um, so the fifth question has been posted as well. I'm going to read it for the last time. Rate the following aspect, the length of the presentations all together. Was it excellent, satisfactory, or poor? Right, I'm seeing the responses are going up. I have 58 already. Remember, your privacy is protected. We can't see your names. We can't see who's saying what. Just be as open and honest as you can. This is for us to improve on the services that we actually offer to all of you, right? Um, can we have the sixth question? Oh, I see it has been posted and been responded to already. Now you are going to read the following aspect accessing the event through the online links, right? When you were joining in, how did you find that? Was it excellent? Was it satisfactory or was it poor? So remember, be honest. There is a link that is shared by Ms. Lala Diksha in the chat box. If you're unable to access the poll, please access the evaluation link. So the similar question that you are, asked, you, are, you are seeing on the polls will be asked on the evaluation link. So just respond to that as well. Um, responses are going up. Remember, you are more than 100, so I'm not expecting to see less than 100 responses. Honesty, honesty, and honesty. So we are looking at 76 responses at, at average. Okay, uh, what did you learn from the workshop? Don't worry about what you're saying, who's going to see what. Remember, privacy always. So there is a cloud question, which means that if you are using the polls, just type in and click submit. We are the newer generation. You cannot struggle with that, right? Ah, I'm happy I'm seeing responses. Okay, okay, good, good, excellent. Yeah, I'm seeing responses. Um, okay, we're on the seventh question. Now, the last question should be posted very soon. So we are on 12 responses on the seventh question. Uh, remember to use the evaluation link if you are struggling. All right. Um, the last question, Diksha. Now, the last question reads as follows. What else would you like to learn about? Now, this helps us develop workshops like this for you guys. Remember, we are servicing you, so we need to know where you are lacking. As much as we know what we can offer you, we also know where we can bridge the gap, you know? Um, okay, I'm seeing answers coming in. Happy with that. 10 responses so far on the last question. 
Remember, I told you in your number, you're more than 500. So I'm expecting to see much more responses than that, right? Okay, I'm happy with the responses. They're coming in. Even after um, the workshop is closed, the live presentation is closed, you can still go back and respond to the questions. You know, uh, it won't be closed until a certain time. So you can still go back and respond and we'll really appreciate your honesty. I'm seeing um, disability, I'm seeing some materials, registration. We will still actually like to, you know, converse with you more about that, but that will be later in the year. Um, yeah. I think that will be the last question, correct, colleagues? All right. Um, from us, the Houghton region, and all my colleagues, the background team, I appreciate you, I appreciate your effort, the teamwork, the collaboration. It's amazing in this region. And to all my esteemed guests, we won't be here if it wasn't for you guys, if it, there wasn't a need for us to be here. So I just want to say that well done. Thank you for staying through. Even though we had challenges, we appreciate you for your patience. And we are going to meet eventually again and again during the course of the year. Remember, we are in the counseling unit. I'm not sure if I did actually introduce myself. Hey, oh, my name is Sharon Debele. I'm the admin officer in the VAL office. Um, we will, obviously you do have various contacts. Don't worry if you don't, we'll share it in the chat box. From us to you, thank you. Happy Valentine's Day and goodbye.
Thank you. 